I mean, Charles wrote this beautiful thing. Thank you so much, man. It's been an honor for me too. Voice acting. This is this is the guy who plays uh, Karak. Voice acting is something I've always um, been interested in, and I have um, experience playing the main series antagonist. I can um, put that on a reel, and he definitely can. I'll, I'll send I'll send him uh, clips. Uh, everything about TOV has been so much fun from making uh, that prototype uh, logo. Yeah, because he did the original logo. Um, to just talking about possibilities for season three, all the way back when you drove me out to record for season one. I've started working in the evening recently, so unless something changes, I think I'll only be able to make the Sunday show, which, I mean, he's been black. Yeah. Um, radio silent, basically, the whole time. But um, Oh, we got somebody joining. Welcome. Uh, that's Jeremy. Uh, good. Uh, still looking forward to seeing the whole season um, in action. Those clips you edited look amazing. I'm glad you're going to take a break, uh, get some well-deserved rest and time with your family. I'll be ready to support uh, whatever you do um, next, however I can. Um, so that was Charles, uh, the voice of Karak and Evar. So I know, I know, he, he like I said, he works nights, so um, probably not going to see him, but I, I just appreciate everything that he did. Um, and, and I think out of everybody, um, voice acting, um, I think Charles was the one who got the got in the mode of character right away. Like it didn't, he didn't take much coaching. Um, we only like we only did did it like one or two times because he just was Thank that you. that that on the mark with with most everything. I all right. So nine twenty two. See, okay, Jason's online, so Jason will probably be joining us soon. So that's fine. We got our most of our TOV podcast panel here, and that's that's just fine because. You. Not only are they the TOV podcast panel, but they're also like voice actors of the show. It's like, not only do I own hair club for men, I'm also a client. Yeah, so am I. I buy my own hats. <laughs> <laughs> the hat hair club for men. <laughs> no, oh my me. god, look at this. This camera picks up everything. Do, do, you, guys, do you guys see this um, like behind me? Um, the, the little painting of like a little hand and a big hand and a butterfly? back there yeah yes yeah. yeah, so, um someone my wife worked with um it was about i think it was a couple of years ago um painted that and uh like gave it gave it to i think gave it to me as a gift um to signify just um, me and jose's relationship with each other i thought that was nice. really That's cute awesome. so yeah and then this blue wait not right move your head sean move your head this blue thing right here, um, Jose painted that for me when I was in the hospital for my ostomy surgery um, two years ago. And, yep, and so I had it next to me in the hospital when I was. It took me a month to recover to get out of the hospital. Kids got surgery. some talent, man. Um, so I had that with me as well because I wasn't able to see him that whole time. I'm um, looking at that up close. I'm highly impressed. I, I wasn't. Um, I, I think Priscilla might have helped, but. Um, I wasn't allowed to uh, see him that whole month because he wasn't allowed in the hospital. I, that was rough. That was very rough. Hello, Jason. The lights coming on, they're just like... Oh, he doesn't, okay, he doesn't have headphones, okay. He can't hear. Jeremy, you can hear us, right? Yeah. Okay. Sure. How are you doing, sir? Were we able to see any of the uh, episode ten or any of the episodes? Yeah. Really? Okay. I watched them. Okay. I did get to watch them ahead of time. So. How, how did you like your your character's part fully realized? Huh? Nice. Very nice. I, I'm I'm excited. <clears throat> Down back. Say what? Who said that? I just, uh, I think that was Jason. Oh. Jason? All right. All right. There we go. Now I think you can hear some audio coming through all right. You have views yeah. on the last stream we did. The camera. There we go. There is Jason. I, hey, you got the TOV shirt on. Yay. I do, yes. I, I found this in my closet here. The, awesome. We're stuck in the middle of nowhere one. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the end of uh, episode 10, Jason? I have made it up to the credits. Is there anything after the credits? Okay, so you made it to the Gear and Light Folly part, though, at the end. What happened? Yes. Their fate, basically. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. Which I think is one of the most funniest parts of, of the all three seasons, really, personally. I, I, I love that that bit of ending there. All right, nine twenty-five. I see. I see a someone. Okay, no, that's that's a different message. But I'm going to just go to it, so it's out of my there. Ugh. All right, I think it's just going to be us tonight, guys. Mm. And we might we might have Corey. We might have Tyler again, but I, I okay. don't know. But uh, I give it like three more minutes, and I'll just start the stream and start running the. Uh, the music because we're gonna be I mean it's 32 minutes that we gotta play and then we gotta play again Wait. yeah it's gonna be a long one and and you guys I'll have your glasses right something to toast something. I got Gatorade does that count that count well, this, this, <laughs> no, this is totally just this is just sparkly juice with energy drink milk. okay <laughs> well, if, this, if this helps any but but I'm right there with but, you. Ah, all righty. But Jeremy, um, do, do you got something stronger? A bit stronger? I do. Okay, drink <laughs> it up, man. Drink it up. Drink it up for all of us. Okay. I got gotcha. you. All right. It's like I do this like vodka shots I got from work like ten years ago that I never opened. Oh, <laughs> that is, I don't know if I want you to do that. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, is really, I'm pretty sure they're still good. That stuff never goes bad, but yeah. it's uh, they, they give us as Christmas presents. I never drink them, so I collect them on my refrigerator in my uh, in my kitchen. I do not want you to be hammered tonight if that's what you normally not do. I don't want to be hammered either. <laughs> yeah. so no. We need to pay him a visit sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help you with that problem. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, um, Joe, you got you're recording everything now, right? I didn't start yet, but uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead and start. Go ahead and start. I'm gonna uh, start a clap so I can sync everything up with yours uh, eventually. Okay. I wish we started doing that the first time we started do testing this out. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm trying. So I'm glad trying. we're thinking of this now, the third time around. Hi. <laughs> this is the internal conflict issues. You know, we have them um, before the stream. I, I believe Miller's still going with great tasteless filling fights. I mean, that's been going on for decades. Uh, Don't worry. When, when you're on on your hiatus, we'll 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 smooth things out. We'll 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 have plan sessions. We'll make them everything super right, smooth, make you. it look I'll, professional I'll, as possible. You'll insert a voice box into my throat, so I just everything comes out clearly. You know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking while he's on vacation, we what we need to do is just hack into his account and take over, do podcasts. It's more like a silencer. We need a silencer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get that. Okay, so you you got to go and uh, I was about to say Jason, Joe. We have too many yes. J's here. Yes, Jeremy, I Jason, started Joe. Record. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And Shr Shr Dron Shron. I don't know. Amazing. You could just call him. John, but you just John, yeah, John, John and Jerian. Oh, Jerian's yeah. actually not a is actually a pretty cool name. I, I gotta admit that's pretty cool, Jerian. All right, Stream the Jerian Lifeborn Order. There it is. Starting. Yeah, Jerian. <laughs> I, I can't believe you didn't think of that right away. I thought of that like immediately. Oh thinking, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it sometimes it takes me about a second or so to get my own jokes. That's all. They develop over time, like photographs. Oh. All right, all right. <laughs> Some are more explicit than others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not go there tonight. Okay? Sometimes it just needs the extra fluid to get sent through. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, that just hit me. Yeah. <laughs> You, you do understand I was made... going for a film joke, right? Like it's developing think, film. Yeah, too late. Too late, I, I Joe. Think he cares too late, Joe. To go with first, I just took it. Yeah. Oh no, the, I'm the, not the, see, this is not a me problem. This is a you problem and having a dirty mind. Well, it's wow. not a dirty mind. I'm just very immature. We're talking about forty-year-old plus <laughs> men here, you know, that are. I like, was going yeah. for for high high-end comedy. From, uh, we go from bad joke to dirty joke. You know? I mean, making a joke about developing film is pretty old school. I'm not sure how people even get that these days. Right? We're all old in here, Jason. There's no young people. <laughs> I'm the youngest one here. Wait, Jason. Uh, Jeremy, how old are you? 
I'm 30. Okay, so what? <laughs> see, we are the youngest people in here. We get that. Okay, but it's a very fluid concept. Lord. Uh, there's lots of fluids well going around here. Well played, John. Right, yep. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not gonna, that's not gonna die now. No. Uh, <laughs> be quiet uh, before I baptize everybody. I baptize you in the name of vodka, <laughs> Captain Morgan, and oh well, you know we got Bud have... Light. Oh, uh, you're mixing of... dark and light. That's such a bad idea. Ooh. Let's think of it in the name of moonshine. Oh, okay. That works. <laughs> I mean, we're in Kentucky, so yes, that kind of... Come on, I gotta get a banjo. Ding, 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 I, I, don't. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Ryan's speaking Spaceballs. tomorrow now. You Spaceballs. clearly never watch baseball. Please watch you? Spaceballs. May the Schwartz be with you. May the Schwartz be with you. What part of what? When did they do ding ding ding? That's when they're walking on the dunes. Yeah. They're um, trying to search. It's it's like an Ewok type of race, but they say ding ding all the time. Mm -hmm. That's all they say. That's and they sing it. Dink, 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 dink. Yeah, it's not the, really the joke that I remember. It's like more like uh, they put in. Let's put in the, spa, the the copy of Spaceballs so we can figure out where they are. <laughs> like, the, like, let's comb the desert. Comb the desert. <laughs> and then you got the. Hey, have you found the, anything? The two black guys that shit. got the small ass comb. <laughs> you got the afro comb, no, dude. We gotta keep it quiet. We gotta keep it quiet. Because yeah. there's kids. I, I, I realize that. Here we go. Fire away, a holes. Fire away, a holes. Fire away, asshole. <laughs> yes, that. And I don't know how Rick Yo! Moranis did that voice. I have no idea how he did that voice, oh, but yeah. it was excellent. It was I, excellent. I love Rick Moranis. Oh, uh, <laughs> guy's a national treasure. Only one man dares. To jam my radar. Lone Star. Lone Star. <laughs> Everybody's like. <laughs> that is the funniest moment of the whole movie. I crack up the most when I see that. Every time. Every time. Oh my gosh. We, I don't even know where we're at right now. Who cares? We're having fun in space balls. Yeah. Alright, is the stream good? See, it's important to know if the stream is in excellent condition. condition. Alright. I'll be honest with you, I think the best joke they ever did was Spaceballs. Was deny the alien. When they're sitting in the restaurant yeah. and the guy's chest blows open. Check, please. <laughs> no. Hello, my Not baby. Again. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. I don't Send remember. Me. What did he order? Wait, my hands on special. Oh. It's special, oh, yeah. special. I'll have the cleavage. I mean. Because I was, I was. Did that come out before Airplane? I know no, airplane came no. out first. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I was gonna say, I wonder if they, if they, if he said like, oh, I, I, I had the fish. Because didn't everyone on there had the fish that got fish. sick? Yeah. 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 And you see, airplane was actually a ripoff. Have you ever heard of? Uh... Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar yeah. with it. The, what the original. Yeah, it was like um... zero hour or something like that. Zero thirty. Was it there? Zero I thought there was. I thought it was called Airplane Forty Seven, or like it was a plane number. Yeah. No, no, it's. Um, hang on, I gotta go into my Prime account real quick. I'll go into this Prime account and see what I have. So, I have things to say right at the beginning. Notes. 
Are we still ready to start? Uh, two minutes. Okay. Right. Oh, so you got the pre-roll going. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been going. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm getting Gatorade at the start here. Is that a coincidence, you think? Now, this is a fight. That mm, is strange. No, that is not a coincidence. Google is on to you. <laughs> Just speaking through a microphone online, and they already know. <laughs> wow. Either my phone's sitting right here, or my... I don't know, Discord's hijacking and doing voice analysis and all of our calls. I'm frightened. Uh, Spoken young gas hopper. Uh, uh, oh, I can't even find my movies. Watch it again. Might happen. Out, out, out. Go, go. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Go, 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 go. Go, go. When you take the cat out, how do I, how do I redeem the pet a cat for 6,000? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just hit pet a cat for 6,000. Well, yeah, but then don't you have to have a cat in there? Well, there's a cat here, yeah. Uh, we, we, we can just call him and ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I pet myself. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to go there. All right. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, it doesn't have all my movies. Oh. 20 seconds. Get back to you on that, but there's a movie from Great Britain. That's all I can remember for the Spaceballs actual real movie. It was a black and white film. I want to call it Zero Hour, but. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. All right. <clears throat> I, I, got, I got a thing before I do my thing. Hundreds of Heroscape miniatures, 30 years incurable illness, 300,000 plus stop motion photos, over half a dozen homes, living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, bathrooms, closets, thousands of miles, three major surgeries, 100 plus sleepless nights, one baby along the way, now he's five years old, three seasons, Two canon T3Is, one great story, one dream, one struggle, one victory. Welcome to TOV Live! It is Valhalla time. And it is the time in which we watch the last episode of Season 3, Episode 10, called, well, entitled, The Limits of Power. Welcome, everybody, tonight to a special Tuesday night. We usually don't do streams Tuesday night. A Tuesday night stream for this premiere of Episode 10, Season 3 of Tales of Ahal, The Aftermath Chronicles, a stop-motion adventure based off the board game Heroescape. I am Ryan, Tales of Ahala, and with me tonight with, on the panel is my buddy, Sean, also known as Spark on Twitch. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, I said he was going to be here beside me <laughs> tonight, so here he is. And he's holding me at gunpoint. You just ain't seeing the gun. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, Sean? I'm always better than I deserve. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think you're kind of tired, too, from uh, for driving in a sardine can of a car. Oh, uh, yeah. Started up for this morning, man. I'm telling you. It's just, it's kind of like watching a fat guy in a clown car. Mm. <laughs> and uh, does everybody see Jeremy right now? No, I see spinning dots. Okay, okay, so it's loading on my side too. Okay, let me know if you see Jeremy and I don't, because um, I might have to reset this window if, if I do. Um, anyway, we, we'll take care of that when we get to it. Uh, how about uh, we go to uh, Joe? So we have we have Joe Crazy uh, tonight hey. here on the panel. How are you doing tonight, Joe? I'm well and very excited. <laughs> And boy, we got a cliffhanger for you. <laughs> yeah! A lot of things get resolved. Yeah. The only thing yeah, that really very, isn't resolved is what needs to lead into season four. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Very satisfying. Very yes. satisfying. Yes. Th yes. Absolutely. And Jason, Rocker Robotics, how are you doing tonight, sir? 
I'm doing pretty well. Nothing setting up to talk about. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing, nothing relevant uh, Heroes Cave anyway. Okay. Um, I know you, you already like pre-watched the, a little, little bit of episode 10. What did you think so far? Mm -hmm. well, I was enjoying it, yep. Like the character arc of the two Roman soldiers for obvious reasons. Gear and Light Folly, yep, yep. It was, it's a nice little And ending. we got the right shirt on for that tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we have tonight uh, with us uh, for the premiere stream, Jeremy, the LSCM Collate. He is finally here, people. Thank you, Jeremy, for coming on the stream tonight. I know he's a busy guy between working and moving and managing his own content. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for, for being here tonight. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Hyped. Excited. Lots of, lots of stuff. Ready to go, huh? Well, how about, because this, yep. this is a 32-minute episode so for those of you i mean i might want to just um see we got a minute or two um i don't know if we get started or not because i see audience count right now we could probably be building more here hold on a second. let me just see let me see where we're at here oh we'll just get started so, shall we all right because this is going to run late no matter what oh wait a minute one thing one thing all right everybody raise your glasses we're probably gonna do a few toasts tonight um and I know I know Joe is lifting uh, lifting his glass uh, behind behind that uh... Mario skull. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anyway, so we're just toasting this, and we'll probably do a few toasts tonight. But toast to uh, the best HeroScape series ever. It is good, Nostrovia. Yeah. The only HeroScape series. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, um, but no, very very happy. Uh, to be here finally i've been dreaming of this night for literally years so i'm just so so thankful it's it's here all right how about we get started okay here is the conclusion to pretty much everything that has been um building up for seasons one seasons two and season three for tales of ahala or is it or is it <laughs> let's see how it ends we'll see you guys on the flip side when we do some commentary and for those those of you who haven't seen this yet we run through the episode first um and we turn our mics off so that way y'all can just enjoy the episode then we do commentary another round of watching the episode but with commentary then talk about a contest final thoughts and me cry a little bit probably at the end and be done so that's what we're going to do how about we get started? All right. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. All right. There it is. Estevar and Torrent, because Estevar needs to leave her web. She'll probably be doing that for, like, multiple seasonal story arcs. Because her plan is, like, very wide-ranging here. Um, I'm going to try and... Now, I don't want you to tell me, but you do have a plan with her. Yes. Okay. Uh, hey. What? What happened? I must Jeez, have taken that's the plan. Really, <laughs> she breathes. <laughs> I love how he calls her a little old lady, but they're literally like the same size. <coughs> wow, I didn't know that my guardian. Yeah, I was kind of like um expecting, like when I thought of that those lines originally, I thought like Toothpick was gonna be a little bit higher than her, but it turned out to be kind of opposite when I animated it. Oh, okay. Fear the mind, Joe. Yes, yeah, yeah, pretty mind. much. Wait, time out. Hold it. Me amigo. <laughs> But I guess it goes. I guess it goes to the game reference to where she is really tiny. You know? Yeah, I guess. She's incredibly small when she's in your hand, so that's kind of how I'm maybe. referencing it. I was gonna say maybe if the opposite of the joke was like, because technically in the game he she has height advantage, and so he's just demeaning her. <laughs> that kind of too. It's like toothpick. You don't think he knows things, but he he does. Yeah. He knows. Them. Yeah.
I love no matter what, you can look at these models and you can always see like hair coming off of one of them. Yeah. It's like you can never <laughs> get it off. Yeah, it's, you know, I, it's so hard. Sometimes I would take an air blaster, but with cats in the house and just all these. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just everywhere. But there is something special about that. Like, to me, like, when you it's, watch a show this like This is a home that, studio. Yeah. It's so darn difficult. I mean, and there are times where actually I kind of like where I was able to tweak it to where I could like kind of not mask a hair out, but make it look like it's kind of blending in with everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know the shots where it's very noticeable that it's a hair. Or it's actually like this was like, such a yeah. cool fight. I like this Sergeant Drake's moment yeah. right here. Yeah. The Sergeant Drake switch was cool. I wasn't expecting him to be on top of Usaga. I believe that's like in a, in a story setting. That's the only way to kill a snake like that is the mm. tip of top. Yeah. Perfect that power fantasy. I love spears it. At us. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Run How did Karak miss? Is my question. Mm -mm. Don't know. Plot. <laughs> Zute. They have, they have <clears throat> plot armor. <laughs> I hope killed in the plot armor. Plot armor is important. Us. Uh, I love how this is my first time actually trying to like do multiple scenes at once and so I mean you're you're going back and forth between you know chases battles conversations I hope it all blends well you know it's my first thing first no the editing's time. really good yeah it's very Star Wars ish in that aspect yeah, yeah. Um, where you've got like three battles and you're keeping track of what's happening here, here, and here. All at the same time. There, there really is multiple battles in it because, I mean, you first have like uh, our main group of heroes fighting Mario. Then you have um, Evar and Kelda fighting the Ice Elemental. Um, then you have the um, Honey Python reference right here with. Uh, yeah, that was. I caught that one. That was. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad I caught that one. And. So you have, then you have like arrows against Maro, um, on Light Folly and Severus' side. Then you have also Geert's fight against the, the Maro when uh, we do Jason's classic swear word, Fudge Monkeys. We were able to get that in the series. Um, we also have, um, we also have. Uh, the Zute against the Maro, then Zute against the Ice Elemental, and then the really primary specific one is Lieutenant Dan versus Kurok. And that's a pivotal one, because that's basically them rematching from very early in Season 2 when Kurok basically owned him. If it wasn't for the fact that Epic survived because of the Air Elemental, um, and Kurok, I mean, throughout Season 2, you kind of, I mean, you had Lieutenant Dan kind of being not himself over that encounter. So he's had to build him help build himself up since then. I mean he's still classic Lieutenant Dan, but you don't know how he's gonna face off with Kurok, you know, at the end here. So right. it's kinda of like a him uh um what what's the word? Um I was watching Redeeming the... himself really, you know. Oh. I'm sorry, yeah, I know that uh, today is just not my day to focus. I mean, I can focus <laughs> on one thing only. I think, aside from the teleportation, uh, Evar's ice hands, those arrows are so fun to use. Lucky dice rolls. Lucky dice rolls. Whoever's controlling those Maros are just not having a good day. Look at that. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think the bad and the ugly are deciding to join forces. This is one thing I like at the end too, is Raylan's a shield aura. That's one thing that everybody's going to recognize immediately. Raylan and Drake together. Because that's classic skate. Best friend in the world, toothpick. 
Toothpick told us what happened. And I have a plan. Karak has control of a powerful ice monster known as the Prime Greater Ice Elemental. You and Toothpick go this way and find Karak. He's not too far away. We will get the ice monster. We have to bring those two together and then we can destroy them. But that, but how does that? She said that there's no time. Let's go. Don't you worry, Henderson. Now, the concept of Karak destroying himself, what do you guys think of that? I thought there was gonna be more because <laughs> I, I had seen, I saw that big open like ocean of like water and I thought yeah. he was gonna summon a wave and it would like yeah. freeze oh. or something or like crash onto him. <laughs> like something was gonna happen after he froze himself. Like, oh, there's no way that's it. There's no way that's it. I want more. Yeah. No, so right. like, but then if I was thinking, I oh wait, more, this is just like, more. this is just like, you know, probably the easiest way for him to feel like finishing him, finishing this fight essentially, without having just another battle. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it works. It functionally works. It works. But yeah, I really like it. And I mean, I have to agree. I'm expecting something more elaborate to happen. And it's like when it's so simple to the solution. It's like, why didn't I think about that? Yeah, because I was almost thinking too, it's like, oh my god, is he gonna just grow so big and then explode? <laughs> or like, was he gonna like, go into the ice elemental and then the ice elemental was gonna get big and like, I don't know. It was like, I had a bunch of ideas. Kind of I, don't, like I didn't know what Ryan was capable of. Meaning of life. <laughs> I, mean, I think the only person who really knew besides me was Jason, because Jason the one who is the one who designed that cake in case and advice, he, he did 3D printed it for me. Mm, you can actually okay. see Karak through it. I yeah. Come back soon with help. Fantastic. Me and Mr. Interesting. I didn't know exactly how he ended up in it, though. I just knew that he ended up in it, but that's about all I... What led to that, I had no idea. Are these little rocks spread around? Are those high ground? Are those just, like, something else? That's high ground, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they're There's actually the supposed tiles. to be printed as, um, as, like, gray rocks or something, but I thought... This would be good snowballs. And yeah, so I they're just them as white. Yeah, because they're not attached to the tile. They look like they just placed oh. there, and it looks they're good. Sticky tacked on. Yeah, they're yeah. sticky tacked on. What are those things? Yeah, sometimes you don't know where high ground tiles begins or the regular heroescape terrain ends. Or you know, it's all so integrated so well. Yeah, I mean anyone with a keen eye will know, but like a majority of audience, if I was just showing this to to Jill or anybody else, they'd be like. Wow, this is this is really integrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kimo, she is moment. You know what actually be really funny this is if you had the dinks from Spaceballs like running around in the background. All this took place. <laughs> uh, they're just like running. They're not part of Hero Escape though. So that'd have to be a custom. You could probably do the nids like that and have them not say yeah. dink, but have something have them say something else. Nin, 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 nin. That's what it probably do. Oh, they're like, yeah, they're like Pokemon. They say their own name. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's what I have the Maro doing. I mean, the stingers, the stingers are essentially saying stinger. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And that's what the Drudge are saying. Um, the uh, the regular Maro warriors, they're just doing whatever. They're they're crazy. But um, yeah. uh, the rest are just like the Nagrubs. That's what they're saying. They're saying Nagra. Mm. <laughs> There's your introduction to uh, Chadwick there. That's it you, you know, you you mess with the the voice so much, you would never know that could be anybody. Right. <laughs> like yeah. it, you it don't might. know it's but Ben because Ben has such a deep Ben's voice. voice. <laughs> if it wasn't Ben's voice, it wouldn't have worked though. Really? It yeah, would have made I mean, too, made it too high of a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Just his voice. It just it just did it. Because mm. he still has that. It still carries that kind of like that, that grainy weight. sound that he has in his yeah. voice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right back in a minute. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break and go out. We're going to get to Philip. That, that's well, fine. We have here. We still got 20 minutes, man. Or, yeah, we still got 20 uh, yeah. minutes. You're fine. Yeah. This crazy guy. Thank you. Uh... Ninja How do you like this conversation, Joe? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I was just, I, you were talking before when, when he, when my other line came up. I didn't know when that line was going to come up, 
and I, I was watching it. I was watching it, and I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? And I'm like, and then I said, and then I said, and I was like, oh my god, I called it. I didn't, I didn't even know. Amazing. <laughs> That's great. So virus is so anti Legolas, it should make Legolas himself so cringe. You know. Mm -hmm. Then this goes into another part of the lore that me and Jeremy talked about in the past to where Silvaris, in, in the actual Heroescape lore, wants to go after enemies. He doesn't want to stay in the background um, and just shoot arrows. He wants to go in the battle and fight, but he needs to stay back. So I, I kind of like portray that in him a little bit as well. Yeah, Anybody who knows Heroescape was, lore is going to recognize was, that. Was gonna kill him. But they cannot resist this monster's power forever. We need he got to go saved. After he got saved right before he would have died. He was being a fool. Long against him. They need help. If you can turn up your mic a little bit, Jeremy, you sound a little, little low. Oh, it's, it's broken. I, okay. I've, 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 I've realized it's not working anymore. It's like it won't even stay still. So it's, I don't know. It sounded good. okay. It sounded okay right there. Uh, <laughs> I hate. It's really loud. I hate. Into it. To I hate Audio. We are One of the worst things about editing up. on the planet. Allow this to loose. I also like the story arc within Kelda, which I still think Kelda's story arc is a little weak, personally. Um, but, I mean, I did my best with it, just for her to be the, ty the type of, like, character starting out to where she's just there to heal, you know? She's she's very friendly, she's all flowers and butterflies, but he was put in this position to lead, and appointed by, by Jandar, by Yandar to lead. So she had to do her best to it. So, I mean, a lot of the responsibility does weigh on her shoulders. Um, I mean, they, they, between Raylan and um, Kelda, they do feel different enough as well. It's amazing because they're both sisters. You know? Yeah, I was just going to um, say. In real life, yeah. you know, the voice actors are both sisters. So. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you meant. Oh, I thought. Are the characters sisters, though? No, I don't, no, oh, no, okay. I don't know, but, okay. yeah, but both, yeah, bo both voice actresses were both sisters, and they were teenagers at the time, and now they're adults. Mm. So. Then let's start guiding this I like the Zute ramming into them, you know, kind of breaking up the conversation. That was a nice touch. Mm. Right. No, like the pacing's real. Like this episode's really good. Like the pacing yeah, yeah. of it is like really. It has solid. to be, otherwise it would have been longer. And I just like gotta, I gotta cut the fat as much as possible. Yeah. And then this, this is the moment. I just. You know, this started, this rivalry started in Season 2. And Karak owned Lieutenant Dan, and Lieutenant Dan was just going through, with, like, so much mental conflict, you know, throughout Season 2. Right. And so this is him facing, in essence, his fears, um, knowing that he can't win. And this is an interesting act of TOV lore. One of the reasons that picked Karak so much after, I mean, even though he healed himself, is I keeps on hurting and stinging from that gunshot from the tent dam. And even encased in ice, he can feel still feel the sting. It's not oh, wow. mentioned in the story, but what was that, that this is move? kind of a war. Did he just Isn't look awesome? back? I was, I was... Yes, yes. What? Yeah. I was dude, so they, thrown soccer by players that. do it all the time. Soccer That's players like, do it all the time. It's totally valid. That's a special move. <laughs> I was not expecting him to just... Flip upside down and yeah, that was I wanted to do something unexpected. <laughs> yeah. so this is and this is the only reason why the plan worked is because Lieutenant Dan ticked him off enough to where he couldn't control his anger and he tried to draw in way too much power. Um, so it all fits in together. It's possible. Emotions are the all downfall of all of us. Yep. <laughs> Kind of busy being dead. That is no excuse, Henderson. Both you and Toothpick are getting demerits what? for slacking off. You mean no, okay. me and my best friend Henderson get punished together? I was hoping Joey would be here tonight. Thank you, Mary, but let's not start yeah. saying disturbing sure. things at this moment. Please. Makes me sad, but I'm sure he'll see it. I believe. 
Please tell me we have a plan. Yes, we do. Crack has to follow us without killing us. Wonderful. No pressure. Just like all these four being back together again. You know, this is their moment. Back together because they've been separated for a while. Yeah, you know, they're the main guys. Main protagonists, yep. <laughs> The set design for this episode is so amazing. Printed a lot of, uh, I 3D printed a lot of snow pillars, you know. These are actually supposed to be rock pillars um, yeah. from high ground, but I just printed, I realized I print something of a different color. That's what it is. Right. It. That is pretty cool. That's the one thing I love about high ground is that you can put stuff underneath the tile. That's my right. favorite right. thing about them. That's that was yeah, this shot right here, shooting yeah. at the. That was a one and done shot. I didn't do any close up, nothing. I just I did the shot. It was all flawless, so I didn't have to do anything else with it. Mm. Not many times I've been able to do that, but that was one shot that I just did everything perfect. There was no bumps or anything, you know, no hairs. It's just excellent. Yeah, like I, like I said earlier, like as soon as I saw that, I'm like, dude, he he's got to do something with that. How do you introduce that a bunch of water and it's ice and you don't do it? It's, it's just, like putting it's just the gun along on the, the shores of the continent, you know. I guess, so, yeah. It's just a good background. I just, you know, aesthetics basically. No, no, I mean it's Why great. It's, it's it's so interesting to look at. But then you had the the ice, the greater ice elemental, like on like the water tiles too, and like things started connecting. Like, oh shoot! Like, is it gonna get really big from all the water and then like get so much power and like? Uh, I mean, which the power kind, comes I guess from it kind of does, because he freezes himself. But and all right. that power is coming from the ice elemental. And you see the significance now of Karak's that symbol on Karak's chest. It finally comes alive. Right um, there. Um, Different type of sound, but it's it's drawing all power. So this is his destiny fulfilled. But he's just Come too quickly. Everyone hit the deck. Shield yourselves. I like this at the end. I had this actually written before almost everything else. This ending argument where <laughs> Lieutenant Tan is just like <laughs> speaking and lecturing everybody, and all this chaos is happening yeah. behind him, giving toothpick a lecture right before they die. You know? <laughs> Oh yeah, and then and then he talks about the clown outfit. I was literally hoping that you had painted one of them with a clown outfit. Like a, a clown um, outfit. Like yeah, I want the Peter time. Griffin like. See, the trick is they're looking for army guys, and then he's like walking in the into the forest with it in a clown outfit. <laughs> I just leave that up to people's imagination. Ah uh, yeah. This is gonna work. So you're telling me that Mr. Big. All gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many nicknames he gave Karak throughout the series, but I'm sure it was like almost half a dozen to a dozen. That's funny. But what's funny, it does feel like a Red vs. Blue like ending scenario. I'm like, oh yeah. Because yeah. that was like, oh my god, that can't be it. I'm like, that, you know, it's so epic. And then I realize, oh wait, this is satirical. Like, uh, oh, of course, it's like yep. this. It worked. Uh, Gimp. Yes, sir. Bring out the big red. I wanted that <laughs> noise, like just <laughs> <laughs> in my head, it the did that like ding instantly. Noise? Ding noise. Yeah, like the, the honking I... of the horn nose. Uh, oh, with the clown. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have that sound effect. I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure it would be easy to get, but yeah. I don't think of that. Became encased in ice, so strong that an ice pick cannot even scratch the surface. Hmm. So Kurok, along with this ice elemental, are sealed away in ice. Funny how it, like can um, reach. It would take a very strong magic. Uh, to break Rachel's uh, voiceovers sure um, were done like like four or five years ago. Oh, oh yeah, wow. yeah, over five years ago, and. It, my voiceovers were done within the year. From the same power they pursue. It is a shame, but I am glad my voiceovers were the last voiceovers I did. Valhalla is safe from that danger. Hmm. 
just thinking about danger. What happened to Kimoshi and her Mara? Then we just have like a bit of clo closure epilogue. for a lot of characters. Yeah. Once you talk about realized senior, the this was, was awesome. awesome. Yeah, I love more high, high ground tiles integrated in there. It does look like the That's pretty good. Are going to I love all the green, and then you can see like the, the brown of like all of the hero tiles in the them. back. If they make a move against us, that was paint. I painted. I painted that. You have painted what? A role of leadership huh? The high ground, the tree roots, and the oh, high ground tile, like the green part. Oh, it didn't print out brown. What about no, no, no! It turned out it was all gray. I had to paint it. Oh, Ivar well, Scar awesome. Carver left us soon after the battle. Once the threat of Korok was gone, he saw no reason to stay. Oh yeah, this threw me for a loop. <laughs> I did. I was not expecting a portal. <laughs> got like a little library now. The runes were cool too. Yeah, the, <laughs> that was. All right, so I think Korg is watching. I think he's having microphone issues. Mm. So here we go. Vidar's schemes or Vidar's uh, schemes here. Sir Vidar. His eyes. Is that supposed to be Vidar? Yeah. Oh, okay. Took over is he actually a. Is, he, is that in the story? Is he actually take over a Soulberg at some point? Well, my story, yes. Because remember, yeah, it's in, it's in Tales of the Hollow Lore. Yeah. When the Wellsprings um, disappeared, um, all the generals became bodyless, lifeless selves, and now Jandar um, is nothing. But Vidar, since he is really close to machinery, he was able to embody um, a soul board. Um, oh, okay. Have some, you know, limited presence. I mean, he's got really no power, but you know, he, he's still. Is that their portal? In the corner there, but, with the roots. Yeah, that's a portal. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and notice these portals coming in. They'll they'll be significant in future seasons. A good rest. Oh, we are. <laughs> they are waiting for me to return to the northwest border fortress after I give my report to you. The guy. Whoa! That is so cool. It's amazing. What's that? All our uh, kingdom there. Glad the toothpick allowed cool. me to keep my leadership mm -hmm. position in the squad. He understands even the very best, like myself, can have a momentary lapse in judgment. That reminds me, I have the clown suit all ready for you. <laughs> oh, joy. Oh, I almost forgot. We left two very dependable soldiers behind to ensure that the ritual temple and here is the moment. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there we go again. Guarding another piece of wall in the middle of nowhere. We are freezing to death. At least this time. Hey, Corey. Given Hello. A small shelter to rest in. I think you sound okay. Okay. Yeah. You just sound a little low, but I mean, I think you can. Your, your levels are just fine. I was worried about it earlier because uh, just in I kept hearing a ringing in my left side. Uh, there's nothing that we hear, so you're good. Okay, cool. Through this climate, of course, we will be cold. And we have some more companions. Here, where are we at? Here. We got six minutes left. So, Corey, what are you, what are you thinking so far? Oh, it's fun. Down, yeah. A lot of action pack. Did help uh -huh. save the world. <laughs> the next time the world needs saving, they can count us out. Oh, oh now I hear Jason. Geert and Light Folly will be very happy in that area. Look at the whole series of figure out. That's my, my I, voice there. You know what? The way, the inflection of, of how you phrased it, it sounded like you. Okay. Then we introduce Chadwick and Sven. I mean, we see it, saw a little bit of Chadwick earlier in the episode, but you got Sven quoting poetry, which he does in, the, in his comics. Oh, this is an original poem that I wrote. But now in Vahada. 
It's very, it's very spinny. Die, it's been aesthetic. Where do we go? If you see the wide shot here, this is what um, the original, the first frame of the comic is. It's the same layout, just a few more trees and a couple things in the background, but it's the same type of tile layout, just a little bit color, more colorized, a bit more refined. I'm giving a lot of homage and respect to that, to the original creator. I even give him some credit in the credits as well. My name is Sven. My name is Chip. I, so this is basically how they meet. And then ask the question that's in the first comic strip. So, you ever wonder where bring it all <laughs> Hey, I like that little callback. So did you know that at, at every set that you made that you were going to put all the figures and take pictures like that? You just knew, like, oh, let me just do this? Yeah, like, basically group shots. Since yeah. all y'all weren't there, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do group <laughs> photos for most, all the, most of the sets. Not all of them, but most of them. It's just a fun shot. That shot, a shot that never happened. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, there's all of them there. Give the old people three D printed terrain. Yes, thank you, Raylan. It has been a few weeks since Kelda gave me her report, and I've concluded there are some things that need investigating. I've taken enough of a break. What are your orders? First, I want you to keep something between yourself, Drake Alexander, Johnny Sullivan, Kelda, and Mariko. From what we know, both Toothpick and Henderson received assistance from an unknown source. Toothpick described her as a small, white-haired older lady. Henderson is still denying that he saw anyone before he captured the Prime Fire from Karak. But we do know he and Toothpick had to have both been given help, and I fear this source of help is not a good one. Please keep an eye out and make sure both Toothpick and Henderson are never alone. Yes, we will. These pillars, or wall spires, that are in different areas of Valhalla, they must be investigated. There could be a use for them that we cannot see. You, Kelda, and Sergeant Drake Alexander will go to each of them to study further. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. Is something wrong? Since the time when the Wellsprings disappeared, I have been stuck here, bodiless, and I know there are things I should remember, but just can't. Like what Kelda told me about Kurok, saying I stopped Utgar from fully transporting Kurok's temple. I Let's do the music. do not remember anything about it. I have so much music that I could there use to something very important <clears throat> about throw in whatever mood spires. the scene required. Since I can't seem to remember, you will have to find the truth. We will, Yanda. Raylan, a word of warning to you. Be very careful when unlocking the mysteries of magic. 
magic and power. Oh no, my Twitch crash. It <laughs> can lead my screen to uh, something crashed. not good at all. Or uh, Twitch. Here, everything looks good on my end. A cliffhanger. Yeah, <laughs> use. Yeah, oh, the mic's not on yet. Hold on. Oh, well. All right. Now the mic's on. <laughs> As I was saying, and the cliffhanger <laughs> continues. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Well, mo mo most things work, you know. M most of those plots work. They're sealed, but you gotta have something. You gotta have something. Those. Those wall spires are definitely going to be revisited and uh, going to have a central part, at least in season four, um, if we ever get that far. But yeah, uh, what 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 do I want to say? Well, um, I don't, I can't say a hundred percent that there will be future seasons. I hope there will be, um, but you just you just never know what's what's going to happen. Um, but. If they're, I mean, and and I, I plan on it. I plan on it. But um, if this is if this is all there is, um, I'm very thankful. I'm very I'm very grateful to have gotten this far. Um, uh, just just to see all this completed, and this is stuff that I was envisioning like like I don't know, like seven years ago. I think it's been more than that. Yeah, well, I mean, season one was like 10 years ago, but writing the script for seasons two and three was about like seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And I mean, it just all wanted to get out in my head. And so, yeah, I, I got more ideas. But I do have one thing to um, read. I got oh, well, a dozen things to read. But before we um, start with a commentary uh, <laughs> for, for this episode, um, I have a little bit of something that I wrote for a trailer for season four <laughs> and this might change over time but I've already written something um, and I don't know who's gonna do the voiceovers for this might might be um, someone who plays Raylan or it might be Jander but um, here's uh, how it how, what I have so far uh, for it so here we go it starts the unknown a mystery out of vision never observed, never discovered, or something that was known and now forgotten by the passage of time. Something done in the past, now unremembered, yet still waiting to be found. If found to be good, the unknown could lead to the path of courage, love, strength, peace, prosperity. But if the unknown be evil, then unleashed upon the world would be power, chaos, blood, grief, despair, destruction, annihilation. For some books should never be read. Some keys should never be used. Some doors should never be opened. Some seals should never be broken. And some graves should never be disturbed. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I have uh, from our ideas getting into season four. Like we're gonna be getting to some... Valkyrie. It's definitely Valkyrie. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking very Stalinish. <laughs> definitely Valkyrie. <laughs> it's uh. Well, I mean, I've already expressed what um some of the future villains are gonna be for um. For, for future seasons um so yeah I, I have thoughts on that but again nothing has been gone any farther much farther than that and we need an anakin skywalker and somebody <laughs> who's good who just goes the wrong way oh, good grief. whether it be just on so purpose, do i want so, to continue with that trope? Just incidental tell me t like that ending that ending warning that yandar gave mm -hmm. uh raylan made me think of when aoa was planning to make raylan evil so I mean, maybe you can answer why that would have been a thing. We might have something leading to that. Uh, it's 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 all <laughs> up in the air right now. Um, I, I think right. I think a returning um, Raylan Evil storyline is good. Um, I just have to see how how it works for for Tales of Ahala. Um, yeah. Uh, how, how about we um, just here? Well, first, first, okay. First, I, I will have to say. So it's ten twenty p.m. right now at night. 
So at 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time tonight, the ep uh, episode 10 will release on YouTube. And when it releases, again, for all these uh, three episodes that we've released this past week, episode 8, episode 9, episode 10, please like and comment, subscribe on the Tales of Valley YouTube channel to enter in the um, drawing for each episode because there's prizes for each episode. So you get a comment in each episode to enter your name into the prize drawing. Here, let me bring up, let me just bring up episode 10 real quick. So the prize for episode 10 drawing will be your own Zute squad because they came in kind of like a little ex machina there at the end of, of episode 10. And so go ahead and leave a comment on, not on this video, leave a comment on the episode 10 video comment how much you liked it how much you don't like it it doesn't matter just leave a comment and you'll be entered in the prize drawing which we will have um on a tov podcast uh, live stream august 20th i think i think that's going to be the the day august 20th <laughs> and for episode nine i, I think it's a, yeah it's a, a greater ice elemental is the prize and for episode eight, it's your own Morrow army. So yeah, get, get to commenting on those things. All right. Just don't leave any cliffhanger comments. Like it was that, <laughs> that, that. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely doing that now. No, I'm that's... absolutely going to do that. Oh, that's an entire that's screen a good of idea. comments. Just yes. The jokes. It's like five of them. Just it breaks five. at the end. Hi. Um, no, I'm so bad. I just I, I lead in the way of going wrong. I am so sorry, brother. Anyway, oh, and I, I also want to introduce uh, tonight as well. We have um, Corey again with us. He was with us uh, on Sunday and he's with us tonight. So, Corey. The, the voice of Henderson. How are you doing tonight, sir? Oh, pretty good. It was nice to uh, see or actually hear my voice for a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> alive! You're alive! <laughs> Yay! Yes! We yeah, honestly, forgot we didn't kidnap line. him and throw him in a closet. Seriously! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. All right, it's been a while since I read the story line. Or since I read the, the line, so... Yeah. I, I forgot um, what the story progression was. I was like, oh years. yeah, I'm alive. He yeah. is alive. The character is alive. Yes, and it's um. I I, I think the best line in, in episode ten for you was like, yeah, we're just kind of busy being dead. You know? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was wonderfully delivered, at Corey. For, for that, that was moment. good. Yeah. 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 Give it a little bit. So here, let me let me set this up. Okay. Here, I'll, hold on a second. Let me turn this off. Okay. So this is going to come on again. I just need to make some adjustments. So hold on a second. Here, let me turn the volume down a little bit. And let me adjust uh, this to make it a smaller screen so we can see our smiling mugs here. All right, now let me do it. Okay, now let's begin the commentary for this. Let's get started. All right. So we begin where kind of where we left off. Um, we got Estevara weaving her 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 weaving weaving. And here I'm thinking I'm tired, but I'm not <laughs> shutting down. I, no, I think it's Estabar's all the energy. The energy is anyway, a weave confirmed. Guys, raise a glass real quick, okay? <laughs> it's it's released, you know. It's it's premiered. It's out there. It's out there. Are we taking another uh, thing? Another toast. Anybody watching out <laughs> another there? Another toast. Take take a drink. Um, <laughs> I got a drinking game for you guys while we uh, watch this and try to go through the um, Cheers. commentary. You, you have to take a shot every time we mess up something that we're trying to say. Anyway, mm. so, so Estevar is mm. kind of like a background <laughs> behind the shadows, you know, villain character. And I plan to have I just her, her villain arc <laughs> to, to like weave, there's the word, weave in and out throughout multiple uh, seasonal story arcs um, until eventually what her ultimate end game is realized. Um, you know, I mean, what, it's, it's it fits be. her role pretty well as an arachnomancer. Right. Like her entire role exactly. is working with spiders, so she probably is very, very crafty mm -hmm. by nature, so it works out really well. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so she's there, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting how <clears throat> she does technically save everybody, you know, from Karak, but she's basically like Karak was a servant, um, and now she's just basically like you're done I, i'm done with you you know you've done what i wanted right. what i've wanted you to do so you know out of the way um 
So, but that still she made herself known. And, but you find it interesting in the scene to where um, the music changes um, based on who's talking. I don't know if you guys noticed that. So you got evil music mm. for uh, Estebar, yeah. and then you have a more upbeat. So it shows that Toothpick is kind of retaining his own faculties, not being influenced by her in any way. But if you go back to episode seven, when Henderson is talking to Estevara, that music doesn't change. It keeps Estevara's theme the whole time, which shows mm. that Henderson is being influenced by Estevara. So there's a little bit right. of a plot line there. Betty picks up on that. See, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things here. Okay, this is a moment. This is a moment. This is the, Sarge's, the Sergeant Drake Alexander's moment right here. This is a fun one, too. Actually, I, I shot this in like half a dozen to a dozen shot ways. Um, so I threw out like 75% of the shots and just did, did the uh, the best ones that I thought uh, for, for that moment. You know, this would be a good time to start ripping through the mother jokes that we had to do as a take No, nope, no, nope, this is still a kid-friendly <laughs> show. I'm sorry. Those are going to be under lock and key. Unless someone wants to pay me, then, you know, that's fine. I can... No, oh, yeah. I mean, literally, guys. Hey, they got, they got, ripped they got probably content. About an hour of just mother jokes. <laughs> you can do, uh, you Some can do content classifications now. You can mark streams as mature oh, now. Oh, hey, yeah, we can, we can release that on fans only. <laughs> only fans? <laughs> only fans? Yeah. <laughs> well, look. Eventually, eventually, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll have. Um, I plan to do some type of. It's, it's not GoFundMe. What is it? Um, Kickstarter. Patreon. Patreon, right? Patreon, subscribe star. Yeah, so something like that. Of them now. Patreon, like type thing. If it's not Patreon, it's going to be something else eventually. So if you guys want to hear me mumbling and muttering nonsense for quite some time, <laughs> yeah, just leave a comment behind and see if we can't get that set up so we can go through the whole blooper reel for everybody. And, I think that'd be kind of fun. Mm, and also to become kind of like a youtube affiliate you need now only 500 subscribers i am 50 subscriptions away to 500 subscribers and i think joe crazy is almost that close so as well you and you and you over and don't hide back there we see you working subscribe and, and i know jeremy's <laughs> building towards it too so so please um if if you haven't subscribed to tales of hell youtube please do please subscribe to joe crazy's and jeremy's and help us get up to where um we can we can uh you know make more content and be able to you know yep. ha have access to actually getting paid for what we do a little bit you know um the passive income is very helpful a little bit helpful yeah helpful. yeah for, for anybody who wants to reach out there i know we'll have to see i mean if it's engaging <clears throat> conduct to people you know um but it every every little bit every little bit helps uh, so and now it's time for a word from our sponsors. Do your feet smell? Are they horribly I don't bad? Think I ever want sponsors. I'd rather be, I'd rather be playing crowdfunded, uh, unless it's like Renegade or something. It's like, hey, we'll give you yeah, this check Renegade, if you do Renegade this. Renegade Game Studios. Here's a here's a little here's a little sponsor. There. And yeah, if they're looking for more, because I read a little bit of your letter, Jeremy, um, before we yeah they they released today, and and what they were saying, like they're basically just getting started. I'm like, guy, they like. They're new, new. If any of y'all are watching this, but probably not. But I mean, if you're watching this, you know this. Like, we're already creating stories and stuff from Hero Escape. So, hi. Did they put out additional information today. They gave oh, information to Jeremy. I have been, oh, okay. I've been talking. Yeah, he's been talking to some of the people. So. <laughs> I see. There, Are we not supposed yeah. to be talking about that on the internet? No, yet? He, re he released something <laughs> well, via his I mean, Patreon. So. To, yeah, to be fair, it's not like NDA or anything, but no. I have been talking to the uh, to the managers and stuff like that, and seeing where things are at, and they are saying that they just got started. So, literally, okay. we are at level zero with with uh, this stuff. So, uh, check something I mean, real quick. Get get your stuff in. Say hi. You know, get okay. to contact them and and let them know that you're interested in helping out if you can. Uh, okay. Also. There is a job opportunity for HeroScape, for those that don't know. If you have game producer knowledge in any sort, they're looking for one. So hit that hit that careers page up, because we get we get that game producer for HeroScape, they'll definitely get started sooner. Because <laughs> they'll, they'll be able to actually have someone to work on it. But Now, and taking a nod to pop culture here in this, um, some of my pop, pop culture loves, of course, I mean, the whole, like all of seasons one, two, and three, um, just reminisce, uh, I, it, it brings me back to like Lord of the Rings, especially the Fellowship of the Ring, um, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. 
Um, but there's also, I mean, just happened with Silvaris, the Money Python reference. Um, they're good, bad, and ugly reference. Um, quite, quite direct, actually. Reference. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot there. And uh, yeah, here and here's here's Corey back, Henderson, Henderson, and other characters back from the dead. Because someone I actually had someone ask me like months months before um, if if people were gonna die or not in the series, and I'm just like, <laughs> I can't really answer that. Yes and no, but I I can't Care really answer. Death is a hard that. thing to write. It's it's always like I've always. You know, when you engage with like franchises and and stuff like that, character death needs to be done a very specific way, right. and you know, like it can't be shock, it can't be shock value, it can't be a shock value death. You can't just kill someone because you want people to be like, you know, right, you gotta have right. a reason for it. And it's just, I, I I'm never envious of a developer or producer that has to make that decision. Good luck. You know, I mean, <laughs> anyone that has to write that as long as it, it always further drives the story, you know, and and, and right, it sets exactly. things up to come because sometimes you need to have like your heroes broken, you know, in order to build themselves back up, you know, and learn and whoever remains behind. So I'm not saying it's not going to happen in the future. It probably will. And some of you guys already know because I've already told you some things. Um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely not me because I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, if you help me with future scripts, you might you might end up knowing Joe. You might have to know, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got Lieutenant Dan Bean, Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. Dan Bean, Dan. That should be like a, <laughs> a motto. <laughs> Yeah, I learned how to master close-ups near the end of season two, no, the, the and I think that helps. Characters look really better. good. Yeah, the characters look really good in the frames. Yeah, everything's so much cleaner. I mean, it takes a lot more time to edit because you start with wide shots, medium, and then close. Right. And you just break down the set when you when you're when you're doing it. <clears throat> but everything just so I mean you're able to help able to cut things a lot better um, if you have more options not too much but you know, you know some right see it makes me wonder so if you could talk to your past self right now Ryan what would you say when you I know, just got started now, right? with this but like yeah if you were just like this was the you got to somehow figure out Valkyrie magic and you got a way to go to the past and tell yourself about right. it today you know Use hit film right away for everything. I, didn't, I, I used I used something for season one called I Kit Movie, um, to, right. and so everything is kind of like not smooth, you know. Mm. And so after okay. finishing season one, I realized I could do everything in hit film and just not with I Kit Movie. Then hit film just just plain hit film because everything you could throw all the photos in hit film and it'll just bring it out like very crisp. Um, so that's one thing. Use hit film right away. Second okay. is, um, like I said, do close-ups um, in your scenes. Even if you got to do things, you know, over and over again, the lines over and over again. Close-ups are your friend. Um, with and the, but you got to get the wide, medium, and then close. You know, depending on what the scene's like. So, um, yeah, I think those are the two important things. That's good. Yeah. No, I think I think the journey, the creative journey, is always something to reflect on and you've you've definitely been through a very very long journey so that it's awesome to see that you know i think i was more emotional but my head's more factual at the moment now so i don't know if i'm actually <laughs> no, that's, that's good. <laughs> maybe at the end maybe at the end right um, all of a sudden it just hits you yeah possibly <laughs> but yeah it's like it's like i said in the beginning i mean it's everything i said at the beginning of this stream i mean that's what happened that's that's what I went through, um, right. with it. With the, the good, the bad, the effort, um, and literally um, many homes. Like when I did uh, the Silvirus in character introduction, which is um, which is season zero on the on the playlist there on Tales of Hell YouTube. Right. Um, I animated and um, voiceovered that um, house sitting 
actually it was apartment sitting at a friend's house in Michigan. Um, I just brought everything with me. Oh, wow. And, and okay. I did that, I did that, I think, um, in like a day and a half. Hmm. And I did all the voiceovers. I did Krug, I did Silvaris, and that's how I realized, okay, I can do Silvaris. Um, not going to do it now because uh, kids are sleeping and that voice is too <laughs> high pitched right now. Um, but uh, yeah, speaking of Silvaris, there he is. I, uh, yeah. Very, and then, so, very good community reference because we all I, i'm pretty sure the goal of savaris's design was to make a nod to lord of the rings so you, right your twist on it is very, i i, very, I tried to be good. as respectful as possible but i didn't want him to be like a copy of legolas i wanted him to be an right. anti-legolas and it just ups the comedy you know ups the satire a bit and then you got the aubrey and archers right next to him just like oh, they're just like oh god and joe you do a great job leading those guys <laughs> you, i i really how many times love... is he gonna get it wrong <laughs> Right, I I really love because that's my that's my my humor like is being like sarcastic and so I I yeah. really love how how that character kind of works for works for me essentially, mm -hmm. and they don't have names yet but I probably in the coming season they'll they'll have names we'll, we'll come up with names for them, and then you know Zute X Mac on a hair, you know, doing the best and it's really difficult like especially for the wide shots you know animating animating all these like miniatures at the same time and get them to where you right. need to go you know did you have a process remembering you got to move like you got to move these six miniatures in this frame remember to move all six of them each time or how did you keep track of that um that wasn't too difficult i mean because <clears throat> usually i would do most of them just in one you know stretch but like especially for the like the big battle scene sometimes it i mean it would take weeks especially for like the beginning of season two battle scenes um to do certain shots um most of the time i just made sure that with the wide shots i had close-ups just in case i needed to cut for it and try to remember as best i can a lot of times mm -hmm. i would take photos with my um cell phone just to remember where i was at um, for like certain wide shots, so when I start doing closer shots, then I know where to put everything, or approximately. I mean, because I mean, there were times where I would be animating a huge sequence, especially beginning of season two, to where I was animating, and then I was in the hospital for a week or longer. And so there were some times where every every everything like in between you know one instant of, of frames there for a series it might be months later um, week week days weeks months later when I would get to the next photograph right yeah and this scene I had this is one of the first scenes that I had thought up of. Um, like this whole conflict between uh, Lieutenant Dan, Dan Taylor and Karak was always was always going to happen uh, this way. Right. The the backflip was something that I <laughs> didn't real. I mean, it, I didn't have it set in stone until a little bit later. But you know, that's like it, it worked. I mean, because I was thinking, can I make this work? And right. when I animated, it, I mean, I again, this was another shot that I did. Um, about six or eight different um, angles, um, and I just picked the two that worked best. So did you come up with the idea of the backflip before you choose which figure is going to be Lieutenant Dan? Because, you know, that move wouldn't work with some of the other airborne elite. It's kind of why I chose Dan Lieutenant Dan as being the one to, you know, be there early on. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it could have worked with Henderson, but Henderson already had his moment in episode seven. So, right. So basically, all the characters got to own Karak except for Toothpick, because Toothpick doesn't just you know, Toothpick's Toothpick. Toothpick is a pacifist. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, he uses a pacifier. No. <laughs> he watches the pacifier. Pacifist. <laughs> no, that's a oh, that's no. an RVB joke. Ah, right. <laughs> very very on point. No, I, I do have to say the visual effects are very impressive. I mm -hmm. imagine that took its own bulk with, of work. With like uh, the elementals being in the same space as the miniatures, 
it's the magic yeah well just the magic effects and, yeah that yeah. too yeah there's a lot of like there's a lot of energy sparks and things like that right. happening though, which is really really neat thank you to triune store for all these uh things that went with it them well yes it looks pretty sharp mm -hmm. all the effects yep yeah I think like it's 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 awesome to see this all animated out because of course you know Heroescape has always been that series of like I think we talked about it I remember talking about it with Joe earlier the idea of Heroescape is just throwing all this stuff together and watching it all just like play out like mm -hmm. it's 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 the the nature of everything fighting each other that's always had the, it's just a very cool thing to visualize and so this series is very good at capturing that element so you're like. You, know, you got elemental magic. You got World War Two, you know, fighters dealing with elemental magic. Yep. And then there's there's elves. A cowboy shows up. You know, like I mean, <laughs> it's hero escape. That's the it's hero escape, yeah. baby. That's the best part of it. I think yep. your your series introduces people to the absurdity that right. comes from this franchise because it's just it's so much cool things all hitting each other at the same time. And you're like, wow, well, this is really cool to see. I mean, I know one example, Kaizuki, who's usually on the chat. Um, I don't know if he's here tonight, Great. but maybe he might watch watch this stream later. But I mean, he he watched. He didn't know about Hero Escape until he watched Tales of the Hell, and then now he now he's got yeah, a collection. Cool. And his his sons play with him, you know, and that's his really sons cool. love the show. So yeah. And didn't you? I, I know you brought. It, I think we talked about it earlier, but wasn't there? Uh, a couple kids that tried to do their own st uh, stop right. motion. I haven't heard from them in a while. Inspired by your, yeah, yeah, inspired by your stop motion. So yeah. like you, you started a legacy mm -hmm. with the series. Yeah, I, hope, I mean that was one of my goals was other people to do the same thing. Well, not the same thing I'm doing, but you know different but variations. Like, get of inspired and try their own exactly. version too. This is the first I've heard of this one. This is interesting to know. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like he, uh, a couple of years ago. <clears throat> It was a couple of years I ago. I remember seeing some, uh, there was a few kids that did their own stop motion series inspired by Tales of Valhalla. So mm -hmm. I'm actually wondering how they're doing with it today. Yeah. What? How they're doing with their series. Well, they, uh, they didn't, I mean, they only I think it was like as, clips and stuff. Yeah, making a little practicing. video. Um, I mm -hmm. mean, these, these kids were like under the age of 10. So, oh. so I was, um, yeah, very, I mean, I, I would, yeah. future generations. Though. Yeah. I just uh, Marion say hi Marion in the chat. I just learned about Hero Escape here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I need need as much gaming knowledge as possible. I do. I I remembered I said I was going to do a, a video for Hero Escape in Spanish. I owe that. I still got to do something like that to help. Uh... Yeah. How long is that list now of things that you have to do? Look. <laughs> as, long, as long as my list is for things that I have to catch up on. I, I, I'm very. I'm busy. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I like busting on. No, no. I mean, you, it is, it is funny. The backlog of projects I end up see. See, here's one thing we have to celebrate Ryan for. He finished a project. It's right. probably, I mean, out of create the creative enterprise of it all, the amount of people that start something and never get to finish it, right? Ryan's finished something. That's like huge. <laughs> yeah, that that's the one thing I have to give to Ryan. Like I, I've talked to so many other film it. people where they're like, "Oh yeah, I want to do this, this, and this, and this, and this," and they never, and then yeah, like, never and they to. never do anything with it. They're like, "I'll talk," but Ryan is the one person I know that is when he says he's gonna do it, he you're he's you're gonna see it. Like it's gonna happen. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Or I'll, oh, die, yeah. or oh, I'll yeah. die trying. You might be pulling yeah. yourself <laughs> your out of the casket to get it done, yeah. but it's going to get done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, that, and that's huge because, I mean, it is very hard to commit to. This is this is all self-labor, right? You mean, you you were self-committed. You were self-motivated. And, I mean, it wasn't, like a, it wasn't like a company thing. It wasn't like a media thing that you were getting paid for. You did this on your own. It's... You know, this is your product, and it's insane to see how far it's gone. It's, Fantastic. It's it's a weird thing. I, I can't bring it up at the moment, but um, I um, I used to leave on, in Reddit. Um, they have like a stop motion Reddit, and so I leave the stuff on here because right. people do stop motion things. They comment on it. I leave the stuff on. People don't even pay attention to it. It's nuts. But um, there was one time I posted something, and someone said, like they like, kind of critiquing my stuff by saying they like like thinking that it's a whole group of people doing it. And so uh, I left yeah. the comment saying, oh, so they this didn't isn't realize it was they, the this is me. 
and the, right. they start talking about everything you know all the intricacies of what i've done you know for whatever um piece of content i was doing uh yeah no that's crazy yeah that uh, if anything if that if that is something to congratulate yourself for you did this all by yourself you know and that's huge because that's a Majority. that's a monumental yeah. effort yeah i won't can't claim all the credit because i mean i kind of done it with a lot of people um throwing in their voices and and you know everybody's support just from family friends it's just you know ma'am got it got to give shout out to doctors and everybody for keeping me alive too oh you into that yeah I'm just glad this ain't real wine. I'd be torched right now. Hi. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, wait, Brody. Wait, wait, wait. Non-alcoholic Brody. beverages. Hold on. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, I picked up three bottles earlier today. <laughs> we want to make sure that we'd be a little full of something. I, I need to get rehydrated <laughs> anyway. I've been on the road all day, so not much chance to drink while on the road because every five minutes I'd be pulling over. Now, one thing I wanted to do, like, I'm going to explain it with Vidar, with, with Einar, um, with Alar, um, a little bit with, um, oh, what's the, the jungle, uh, Akela. jungle general. What? Uh, Akela. Yeah, Akela. I wanted, to, yeah. in some ways or another, connect them to the series, not just be Jandar, not just be, you don't really have Akar much, but, um, there's a reason for that. But just find a way for them to, you know, be noticing what's going on in these. So Vidar here is, yeah. is definitely one. Um, I mean, we have connection of Vinar through the Empress um, earlier in, well, earlier in season three. Um, and then uh, Akila as well, you know, in the jungles a little bit um, because of Sujua. Um, so even though like in, in this, you know, piece of war story, everything is kind of calm, you know, there's not all these battles going on because no, no well springs a fight over. They're right. still watching what's going on, you know. Now I do want to say, um, in addition, I really like the nod that's kind of subtle for Stargate. Uh, yeah, the portals? Yeah. I gotta give a shout out. I don't know who, if it was Eric uh, Erock Hernandez or Bartis. I think it might have been Bartis with the portals, um, but it could have been Eric Erock Hernandez. One, one of them, yeah. um, uh, designed uh, STL files, um, 3D print to those portals. So shout out to those guys. And, and it wasn't it wasn't the portals. It was also like the cave entrance um, at um, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, wherever it goes into uh, before going yeah. to the cave. Um, so yeah, those I, I use those guys, and I, I had written to them and thanked them a long time ago uh, for that, and I give them nods in the credits as well. I mean, the bottom line is to me, it just looks sick. I and then, love it. Huge yeah. shout out to High Ground Tiles too. Huge shout out to to um, to to Bill and Kara. Thank you guys for I still, I just still remember, creating that yeah, stuff. Well, yep. When they when they announced their Kickstarter and everything, yep. I still remember when that was going live. I, I was in. I, I was so in on that. This series this series helped a lot in in introducing that product to right. a lot of players because mm. I mean, while we are waiting for Renegade, of course, you know we do acknowledge there's a potential future for stuff we we had to fill the holes for a long time and mm -hmm. high ground answered that request yeah. very very immediate and very very professionally and they i mean their product is amazing you know mm. i think i remember when you let me borrow their dice tower for escape con and everyone's mm -hmm. like is that is that a hero scape based dice tower like how is that and i was like that's high ground tiles. They made that. You know? Those ended up falling apart pretty Brilliant. quickly during Scape God. <laughs> it, 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 there was a lot of rolls. I didn't realize how much I'd be rolling dice through that thing. But <laughs> yeah, and by the end of Scape God, we're just like character. we're just like okay, I'm just you know, very... using something else. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, they they're really nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nice visually looking, and you realize it's like instead of you can make them whatever color you want, just depends on what um, right. filament you're using, really. Oh yeah, these yeah, that's, that's a that's one thing I still need to get into is 3D printing because I mean that's the future of miniatures now. I think <laughs> can't get them, just print it. <laughs> uh, it seems to be about just anything in life. Can't get it, print it for sure. 
which is now, brilliant. <laughs> what do you guys think about this with Gear and Light Folly? How because originally like they just show up at the end of season one, and I thought it was just going to be that one bit with them, and that there was right. no way I was going to integrate them to the rest of the story, but it did. And I think it was actually one of the best things that um, happened really in the series was matching them with everyone else, them becoming part of the that. conflict, even though they, they didn't want to be there, especially Gear. And then the Sven and Chedvik were referenced, which, I mean, that's a, that's another nod to a very cool Heroescape community yep, event. Yep, exactly. Because uh, those comics, those comics are real worth the read, I believe. I know that, they came out a while ago, but if you do ever have a chance to swing over to Heroescape, exactly. and they're absolutely they're, funny. I've read through them all. Very, very good. And I usually, yep. I take a little bit of that, you know, that, the essence of the story into, into TOV as well. Um... And thank you, Brad, for permission to use these characters um, so much that the guy who created um, that 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 little uh, comic strip. Um, <clears throat> I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to send him these these clips uh, later, um, just so he can uh, you know have them for his own and right. get his opinion on them. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool opportunity to see. Like I mean, there's there's so many nods to various. Heroescape community elements in the series with mm -hmm. the high ground and with the comic characters and everything like that. I think I think it's fantastic. Just very very wonderful love letter to the Heroescape community on exactly. top of the the process, you know, that you yeah. went through to get this all stop motion made. Literally hours of content. I hope ever I spelled everybody's name right. I hope I got everybody in the in the credits that needed <laughs> to be there for season three. Um, I'm pretty sure I did, and if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, um, but you know I thank you and I appreciate uh, all of you um, that have helped out. Everybody from all walks of life, really. Right. And yes, I, I, I voice a lot <laughs> of... <laughs> yeah. The... <laughs> just like one, one. I, I probably left out a couple as well. And this is a lot of people. This is mostly like like parents that transported kids at the time when they were kids. Um, right. A friend of mine, Adam. I remember. I don't remember Jason when you, me, and Adam were doing that little uh, wing flapping sound effect. We drove on the highway and tried to. Yeah, I remember that. I was trying to record. <laughs> it actually, worked really well. Yeah, it did. It That's did. Awesome. I mean, it's just, you can barely. It's subtle, but I mean, that was an afternoon, you know, of doing that. Driving around town with the window halfway down, trying to do weird effects with the microphone and what the microphone did this and that. <laughs> and then a little after credit scene, because you know, that's kind of a thing. Man goes evil. That, that you that no. you need that you need no. to do, just to set up if there's anything in the future or this oh, also the I mean, modern yeah modern cinema is always uh wait after the credit <laughs> and even if there isn't like even if season thor and season thor season four never happens hey guys start drinking. drinking thanks for drinking <laughs> if, if you're playing oh yeah that's right it's um, already empty so i think i just jumped ahead there a little bit i've just been um, taking shots but if it's even if a season four doesn't happen <laughs> Um, people can still play, you know, based off based off the Tales of Hell universe into whatever right. they want, you know, to to go with that. It's like I told Joe, the, my very first army in Scapecom was based on Tales of Hell because I played Kurok and the mm -hmm. Elementals. So that was that was that was per on purpose. I was like, I don't know who to choose, so I'm just gonna choose what I was working with for the past couple of years. <laughs> but, yeah. That was that was a very cool army in itself. It is a very cool army competitively on top yeah, of is, being yeah. part of this fantastic series. So. Yeah, but yeah, Shot I got myself series. a bunch of fire elemental proxies now. I can probably use for escape con. I'll bring them with me. I know I have I have three. I got I got the two from the prize table and then I got my originals. So firestorm might be a thing. Mm -hmm. I might be poking at that. So most likely. Now these wall spires. Wait, are very did I just announce my army? Uh, okay, everyone, ignore that <laughs> we, part. We might talk about that don't. on Sunday again too. Um, for <laughs> don't use my podcast. Don't use my summer. competitive means to win, please. But yeah, these wall spires. I always knew these wall <laughs> spires were going to be were gonna be important, even from uh, episode, from season one. Um, right. That they were going to, they weren't just going to be significant to the elementals. Um, but they're also they are also gonna have um, significance in the future. They might contain something within them. Um, something might be sealed away within them. Possibly, I don't and know. That's when that. Revna comes out. So we'll yeah. have to sort through the story <laughs> as we get uh, 
get, get closer to that. Yeah. But, and you notice that, I mean, Jan Dargander, he doesn't remember everything because of right. the effects of the not having all springs. The, the, what's the term? Losing, losing Amnesia. the corporeal form. Yeah. Amnesia, like lack of power, just a little bit of foresight. I mean, and you notice there's, I mean, we haven't seen Ullar. We just, we saw Vidar a little bit. Um, right. So, I mean, there, there's really still up in the air, like, what's going on with these, you know, these generals. <laughs> if they still exist anymore, where are they at, or if their uh, fa their factions or armies are even looking for them? All right, but that is all she wrote for that. And here, okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some background music going on here. The end of a series, but the start of a new era. <laughs> yeah. Well. Definitely have ideas. Okay, let me get background music going here for a second. All right. So let's see here what I say. Um, da, 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 da. All right. Well, I got a lot. I got a lot to say. But how about we? <laughs> um, I mean, it's ten fifty-five. So in about twenty minutes, episode ten will be will be up on YouTube. Um, how about we just? Uh, well, let's give one more toast, and then we'll do a final thoughts, and then I will give um, a lecture. <laughs> so toast to um, <laughs> pretend there's still something in my glass. Okay, yeah, that, same for me. I just every I'll drink enough. Okay, we see you, Joe. You can go down there. Yeah, I'll drink to that. All I got right, plenty more, of paint more, I could drink. That's that work. <laughs> I'll, yeah, do, I'll just, do half a shot. Just a big thank you. Oh, this, is empty. this jar is empty, too. My peanut jar is empty. All right. I've been drinking out of my water bottle. These guys are <laughs> luscious. <laughs> I, no, I absolutely am. I've already I've, I've accepted that part of my life. But, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sean, how about you go first? Final thoughts to you, sir. Oh, gosh. It's been one heck of a ride. The ups, the downs, the hiding in the bathrooms... The Skype calls, reading my lines, forgetting my lines, going on and on and on about... With the script in front of you? Bad jokes, yes. With the script in front of me, I think it's physically impossible, but somehow I managed to forget my lines while the script's in front of me. <laughs> Which made for some good ad-libs. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that we've muttered... <laughs> Have made it into the if, show, actually. It, yeah, well, some things have, yes. And there's stuff that will never see the light of day. Unless you guys start subscribing to Patreon now. That's some future. good blackmail. Yeah. We get enough people subscribing to that, and uh, uh, we're going to probably have to force the that truth one out. Them out. Yes. Then you guys get to hear all my horrible mother jokes that I've gone on about for over an hour. <laughs> oh, and, and that's what she said, guy. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> oh God! It, it, it gets bad. But he's not the that, only one. That scares me. Yeah, he's not the only one. <laughs> I kind of like went off the interesting, rails. Interesting off the rails stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, guys, it's been one heck of a ride, and I'm just glad to be a part of the crew. It's an awesome dream, and uh, you know, not always have I seen the dream, but with that, he keeps inspiring me to come back and do it more and more and more and more and more. It's just, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. When you catch that energy and you can ride, that's awesome. So, to you guys. <laughs> I'll cheers a little. You're a lovely bunch of luscious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Corey, go ahead, sir. Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. got you. Yeah, here we hear you. We can hear you. Sorry. Uh, I feel like um, it's I'm kind of cheating a little bit popping him <laughs> joining in at the very end of it oh, all, but and, uh... it's it's why I can say is I'm proud and happy for you Ryan because I can tell that you put in a lot of effort into this and it's I'm really happy for you to see your project come to fruition and it makes me incredibly proud that I was able to contribute to uh, helping you helping you all complete this project. So congrats to you, sir. 
Thank you. Yep. No, honor's all mine. Oh, you guys, you know, helping out. Everybody, everybody who's helped out. The honor is all mine. All right, so thank you, sir. Um, all right, uh, Jeremy. All right. So I've been here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, like just it, it's it's an interesting. How do I say? It? I was describing this before when in regards to some of the franchises that I've invested my time into, and yeah, Hero Escape is a big part of who I am as a person. Right? I I was talking to Joe about it, and it was like you know I encountered the game very early on in my in my years and played it for many years, and then got super invested in the community literally the last two years prior to its discontinuation and got really involved with the customs group when they first started C3V and all of that. I was writing the character bios for that series and stuff like that. And I remember, so this was at the peak. This was like right upon my return to the United States around 2014, right? Ryan had just posted in the, the Facebook Discord, hey, I got a project idea I'm working on and I wanted to see if anyone was interested in helping me out. And I messaged him and I was like, look, <laughs> well, okay, I didn't say it like that, but <laughs> I, I, uh, I have a very strong hyper fixation with, 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 with all the story behind HeroScape. Like, HeroScape lore has been one of my favorite things to get into, it's a conversation material and, and whatnot. And Ryan's project, Ryan's, pro uh, Ryan's pro production was the outlet I needed to really invest myself into this thing that I was passionate about because you know I was able to consult and I was able to tell him about the lore stuff and, and everyone everyone comes after me about the whole Jandar Yandar thing right but I have a very good reason for that and I will stand by it till the end of my days right uh, <laughs> but being able to do that right having that opportunity was 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 very very just it was great and and I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to have done that, be able to contribute the consultations and, and give you kind of get those lore rundowns, rant to you about lore stuff. It helped a lot. I'm pretty sure I talked your ear off. Oh no, you're fine. When it came to the story <laughs> elements, like this is why the the Valkyrie did this, you know, all this stuff, and and seeing you not only use that consultation but then create your own narrative for HeroScape was super cool to get invested into and i mean with all the passage of time like as like that voice that voice that i got to contribute to to vida right like was i remember that being one of the most exciting moments of my life that i could tell people i'm like i'm a valkyrie Everybody, you know like i was so excited about that. <laughs> that that's the first time and, we met too that was uh, right exactly that was a little bit In before person. jose was born you know right right it was and so i want to say that about 2017 was when I got to to be able to contribute and and being able to see this grow to this point and we're we're in the area with new HeroScape being uh, approached by Renegade Game Studios having mm -hmm. you know me and you work together with Avalon Hills uh, rendition of it me and you work together with the series for so long it's just there's a lot of a lot of emotion to this right because it's just it's been such a big part of my life and I thank you Brian for inviting me uh, primarily because it's just I'm glad to have had a chance to just have an outlet for my HeroScape obsession. <laughs> um, and, and for those that don't know, Ryan's the prime is the primary anchor for for my my connection to the community, right? Because I mean, it wasn't HeroScape's fault, obviously. Uh, life life gets in the way as it does, and I did step away from playing the game for a while, right? Like I was telling Joe prior to ScapeCon, the last game I played was 2015, right? So, Tales of Ahala was my way of staying connected with the franchise, even past the point that I wasn't allowed to play. And that was, and I'm grateful for that, because like, I mean, it's still here, it's still part of who I am. You helped keep it a part of who I am. It still gave me that like, I don't know what the word, permission, I guess it is, just, just to be excited about it. Right. To have that have that space right. have that space to be excited about heroes game be like guys look there's a stop motion series about my favorite game just check it out and, you know i was always being able to talk about that and talk about the concept with other people was just a great thing so yeah uh tldr thank you for all the invi invitations to your to your show and being able to participate in all of this and be able to to you know contribute the way i was able to you know, I, 
Got my t-shirt. You know, it's a little a little smaller than it should be. That's my own. Yeah, I know. At the time, yeah, at the time you were thinner. <laughs> I was thinning. <laughs> I was thinning back in the day. I got I to gotta get another size. But yeah, no, I, I am very proud to be able to wear this and know that I was able to help out in, in my way, in my, my lore, lore brain way. So uh, as I'm, I'm drinking a, just, just to give to the, to the audience, right? I'm, I'm imbibing from a, a Indian sourced vodka, right? So in India, they say Akshaya, which is the cheer of good fortune. It is to basically bless new ventures and, you know, opportunities for the future. So I say to you, Ryan, and to all the staff and everyone of Tales of Valhalla, Akshaya, Akshaya. and maybe see the future of Heroescape. It's, uh, yeah, well... And I yield my time. Yeah, no, I, I, I just want to say, Jeremy, that, I mean, when meeting you and, and conversing with you about lore and stuff, um, I easily saw, you know, the potential in you and what you can be, and I always, you know, um, kept you in mind even that there were periods of time to where we didn't talk for a little while because I know you were going yeah, through life things. Life, life got crazy yeah. and um, <laughs> I always wanted to do my best to uh, you know help you in any way I could to help you realize what potential and what you could be um, so it's it makes me very happy to see you know how far you've come um, in that I appreciate that yeah. thank you yeah so no, I yeah, I'm a lot more confident on the internet. I'm 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 a lot more confident on the internet as a streamer because of being able to work with Ryan. Ryan, I'm pretty sure your stream was the first time I was online, like Probably. ever, like ever <laughs> being physically present on yeah. Twitch was a Tales of a Hollow stream. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I owe I owe this whole career thing to you essentially, which is a, super cool to think about. So thank you. Oh, okay. So <laughs> honors all mine. Um, no, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Jace, Jason, go ahead. Out of everybody that I, I well, with the exception of family, um, you're the one that uh, I mean, we've we've known each other the longest. Um, it's it's been a while. Twenty one years now. Yeah, and and Jason was Pretty the one who that. introduced me to. I've said this before, but Jason is the one who introduced me to HeroScape. He introduced me to the podcasting. Um, so, um, if you want to thank anybody for how this all started, I, I point to that guy. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Jason. I guess. <laughs> thank you, bro. But yeah, go go ahead, Jason. Final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome to see some big, massive project like this come to conclusion in a fun way. I mean. Like you were talking earlier, a lot of people start these crazy projects or even just say we're going to do them and you never get anywhere near the finish. So it's, right. it's, it is really special just to finish a big project. That, that in itself is just an accomplishment. And then I got a few fun little stories here to talk about okay, during the time. So I was doing some of the voiceovers. <laughs> right. I don't think, um, because I, one thing I think I originally, because how I ended up being Nigas or Nigat yeah, Saz, voice Nigat Saz. Saz voice, yeah, yeah. yeah I can't remember all of my. Because originally I was trying to record voiceover or basically animal noises for the Dumatef guard, I believed, and I was doing Probably. a terrible job at that. <laughs> and somehow on the spot, it came over that demonic language that Nigat Saw has, and you're like, okay, I want you to do this guy yeah, now, and I yeah. basically had to make up this <laughs> fake language on the spot to, the, for all his various scenes, add a little bit of inflection to him, and a little bit of just, you know, emotion to what he was saying, trying to convey, like, exactly some intelligent ideas behind it, and when it's really about 17 different syllables crammed together in about just different random ways. Um, and so the other thing, then we move on to Knut Gernt. I'm pretty sure, the thing is, Geert. I'm a terrible actor. Geert. Geert. Yeah, okay, I can never pronounce anyone's names right. Drink of Geert. Oh. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm pretty, I have to figure out one line where I say my name, like, I say the character's name, it took me like probably 50 times yes, to, get to get it right. <laughs> and you kept on getting light folly wrong, too. <laughs> yeah, it's like all the light folly. <laughs> The reason they call that fully is a term in video production for types of right. sound recording. Yeah. I get that, right. and I get that in my head <laughs> instead of light folly or whatever it is. But I'm a terrible actor. I can't. I can't really play other characters. I can only be myself. So I know you wrote 
Gert, Gert, or however his yep. name is pronounced, is basically just a slightly amped up version of me right. in real life. So it's Gert. like, I could do this. I know. <laughs> it's a little bit of me, a little bit of Lewis Black, minus the swear words, and I think you got something that kind of works pretty well. Um, and the one thing I think it drove you crazy about when I was doing the voiceovers, I'm very animated when I talk, and I would do that <laughs> during the voiceovers. <laughs> so I would even move my head away from the microphone a few inches, or oh, see yeah, like, jump on like, my hands trying to do the animations of what the guy was talking about. Yeah. And Ryan's like, just stand there and say the lines, don't move. <laughs> I need emotion, but don't move the room. <laughs> like, I can't. Oh, but it's good times. It's all good times. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yeah. So, thanks for the opportunity of having me play this character. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's about it. So, congratulations on getting your, your entire massive project done here, Ryan. Oh gosh. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, like I said, it's um. Like I said, it, it wouldn't have been possible uh, without you, without your influence um, a long time ago. And say that, it's like, wow. Um, yeah, no, I thank you uh, so much. Um, Joe, relatively, yeah, I don't know why. Uh, aside from everybody else, you are a newcomer here, but um, you still... <laughs> I don't know why you let me last. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to like like lean up to that. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to like close. I mean, you're the closer. Obviously, yeah. you're gonna be emotional. I can't. Like, it's just not in my blood. <laughs> um, but because everyone's talking about like the end, it's the end, it's the end. I I am gonna make sure Ryan doesn't finish because I want to know <laughs> more about what's gonna happen. So. I am not letting to let him stop. Um, <laughs> so even if it goes exuberance. to crowdfunding, which I'm sure it will be, I'm going to make sure everybody knows about it so that it doesn't end. Let's, so there will be chapter well, four and five and six. Let's, we need to let's, gang let's, up. Let's on put it this way: if there's if if um we meet a crowd, if I mean we're going to do a crowdfunding campaign, I, I'm I'm pretty positive. Some way or another, we'll yeah. figure it out. Um and. Depending on what we get depends on how fast everything comes about. If I get zero, then it's just going to take a long time to come out. Um, if I get more, then it'll be faster. That That's just how of it course. goes. Yeah. We need to gang that up is... on them and just make sure I mean, I mean, that it's not the end. It's just, just how... the beginning, yeah. the end of the beginning. Right. I mean, we, we still got Renegade stuff coming out, you know, eventually, and then we still have all the Avalon Hill lore we got to work with, so you got plenty of material. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah well, I don't. I don't think we're worried about that because I'm sure Ryan's yeah. imagination, uh, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna he's gonna bring on a whole other writers team to help him. So there's yeah. gonna be you know an entire entire uh, you know imagination world to, to work with. But that's not the problem. You have AI. The problem with, no. is no, no way. <laughs> you know we've already we've no, we already gotta, read an, an AI we gotta, story based we gotta on get, us. Oh my gosh. Let's get a. Get Ryan to film uh, videos of all the other planets. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather keep it on Valhalla, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it is I the tales want... of Valhalla. Yeah, that's, we'll let, that, that's, no, I we'll let someone else do another planet if they want to. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do origin stories of before or, they stories. they got came to Valhalla, you know? Mm, that right. sort of thing. You know, go ahead, tell the stories of the dragons and tell the story of Mar. Tell the story of, you know, do, wherever uh, Severus came I'll, from. I'll, I'll bring popcorn and I'll watch. Yeah, <laughs> no, we're all ready. I mean, I already, I have, I have in my, in my head and a little bit in my notepad of my pitch of what the Heroescape movie would look like. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like a live action Heroescape movie, so... Look, if they if they can do a Barbie movie, they can do a Heroescape movie. It's it's okay. No, 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 no. That's totally not the question. If no, they no, can no. Do they a would, movie no. based off a of battleship. They can do a Heroescape. <laughs> that's what's just gonna say. Yes, exactly. Did the battleship movie was actually okay. I actually liked it. I liked it. Was a, it wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. Know. It wasn't it was, bad. See, I think it, the only it, it thing was was very scenario is we just would lose <laughs> control of our vocal cords. Hey. I, it had I just, Liam I thought that was crazy. Mason, he had Rihanna, right. it had actual vets in it, yep. there were aliens. <laughs> what more could you ask anyway. you know? I don't know Any what space you, 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 you pretty much really belong to, but I have a set of skills, 
and I will find you, <laughs> and I will kill you. <laughs> he, <laughs> he had to get, the main character had to get approval from Liam Neeson to marry, marry his daughter. That is That's a crazy. challenge up, but this man destroyed, this, you know, why are we talking about Battleship? I don't know. Uh, it's how we get out of these things. Okay. We're, we're about a minute away from the possibility uh, of a series on YouTube, by the way. It's 11.14, 11.15, and it's going to be out there. So Good. Go. So we'll wrap Let's up click. my time. No, it's fine. It's fine. So continue. Ryan, thank you so much for doing something as special as this is. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure uh, that I have met you. Uh, all together, regardless, uh, only online and in person, because mm -hmm. that was that was a gift. You got to see that some animation too, you know. Last and yes. I mean, I did last summer. That yeah. was, I will never forget that. That was a gift. Um, so I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, learning from a master of you, uh, understanding of more uh, film aspects as being a film connoisseur, I am. So. It's uh, it's awesome to to learn more. I, I love learning more about film, and obviously stop motion is something that I don't uh, particularly do as often or at all. So uh, it's very time understanding and learning. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I know. Oh, I know that. Yeah, but speaking of time, I'll yield mine. <laughs> and I'll, I'll hand you, the torch over to you, sir, so you can all make us cry and weep. And oh, uh, um, there you go. I put the pressure on you. Get him. Well, I'll say what I gotta say, you know, because um, uh, I mean, I feel like I've earned this platform a bit, you know, a little bit. So I mean, you work, you anything. put hours, thousands, probably oh, thousands yeah. of hours, you know. Um, but uh, here, I just want to show everybody. I, I don't know if people can see this. But um, there it is. It's on YouTube, episode 10. It's out there for people to watch. So if you couldn't see it in the stream, go to Tales of Hell YouTube. Um, like, leave a comment, subscribe, leave a comment so you can, you know, be in the drawing for those Zute, for that Zute squad. So it's there. Um, okay. First thing I want to say, let's see, I got, I got notes. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, I just want to, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we do have a Discord. There, there's a Tales of Hell Discord. Um, and there's a link, link in the description below um, for most of the videos. Um, so get on there, be part of the community. If you want to chat, you know, talk with me. I do have a general, um, which I might end up popping in every once in a while. Uh, most likely I'm paying, playing games or something. So um, I, I, I can be available there or just, you know, to chat. There's, there's different things. If you're into Heroes Escape Customs or lore or gameplay, excuse me, there, there's um, things to talk about and probably will expand that in the future. Okay, so who's ready for an announcement? Okay, obviously I am so done. Like I have been doing this <laughs> for 10 years. Um, and when I say I've been doing this for 10 years, with the exception of like um, traveling slash vacation type things with family, um, hospital visits, surgery visits, um, times when during emergency where I wasn't able to, besides that, five or six days a week, at least um, for like two to four hours a day, if not more. Every single week I have been doing this. And I need a break. Um, That's fair. I, uh, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I want to spend some time with my son. Um, he's five now. Um, I mean, I was in the middle of uh, animating season two when he was born, um, and that was a great, uh, great moment in my life. Um, but yeah, I want to spend a little bit of time with. Uh, I want to spend a little time with my wife. Uh, I don't know. I. I mean, I could live till eighty, a hundred years old, but um, in my situation, I just don't know. And um, yeah. Um, I need to give him a little bit of time. Um, but with that being said, um, it's not done. <laughs> what I've done these last 10 years, I haven't released everything yet. There are still three character introductions that I have not released. 
that I have not made. All the materials there. I just got to get them up. So probably sometime, like I said, I'm giving myself a little bit of time, but probably next year I'll start making those things and we'll, we'll have uh, um, the rule of 40 years, Ryan, remember? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Marion. Um, uh, what, what was I going with that? Uh, no. Um, so, yeah, next year we'll premiere those you know i'll make them you know still do some behind the scenes live streams for make, make setting those up and uh, do a few more you know quirky character introductions for some of these characters in tales of Valhalla. um and uh yeah so so there's that so there'll still be stuff going on um we do have uh this coming sunday like i don't i don't know if i'm gonna do something tomorrow night because usually i live stream on wednesday nights i might like play a video game maybe monium or something um it might be late, but I'll try to live stream tomorrow. But definitely this Sunday, uh, we'll have our last uh, TOV podcast f until August 20th. And um, we're going to have some guests on. We're going to go through some uh, Hero Escape cards and stats. Um, just rapid fire around, go through like maybe four or eight of them. Um, have some really fun Hero Escape um, Hero Escape fun. I can't talk. Drink up, people. <laughs> Here, I'll give myself stat. a moment. No, I don't know. I just grab this. But yeah, <laughs> um, before before skate we contest, have a stack just we'll have, waiting uh, there. We'll have. We'll have. Uh, Why are so, they not in like binders or something? What is that? So after I'm moving, Joe. I'm trying to organize. Yeah. And We're that's how you move your cards. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> this is how you lose your audience fast. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> it's okay. The numbers are dropping anyway, so on the stream. So yeah, it's fine. Um, no. no. But uh, the real people stick around. <laughs> um, yeah. So TV podcast uh, this Sunday. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun to just um, finish and finish everything out uh, everything off. Have let everyone have a long break. Who's been regular you know panel members on the TV podcast for this year, and then we'll we'll be back at it August twentieth and uh, see what's going on in the hero script. I'm glad the news broke. Um, about Hero Escape coming back before I went off, I went offline. Um, right. But and so that would, been, that would have been the moment. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I've just been like, okay, I can't do anything now. But yeah, so between <laughs> um, uh, this 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 next Sunday and August 20th, there probably ain't going to be too many live streams. I'm just, you know, it's just going to be me and my family for a little while. I I think I've earned that. You might make a guest appearance on a game or two. Possibly, but uh, I mean, some of the sometimes I might be out of town, so I mean, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of adventure with my family, you know. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, first thing I'm gonna say, um, and this was in the credits, but I'm gonna expand on it a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, for about 30 years of my life, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and some people might be able to manage that illness well. It is an incurable illness. You have it with you the rest of your life. For me, from the very beginning, it's been a life-threatening situation, even at um, when I was 11 years old. It, it's, it was, um, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of rough patches, and especially in the last 10 years. Um, so it's it's been a very severe um, illness for me, and there it was even a few points where um, a couple of years ago, um, when I was going through the last surgery I had to where I had to remove a good portion of intestine and have a permanent ostomy put in, um, I had to um, basically on a dead man switch um, leave behind a video that I'm thankful that no one will ever get to watch because it was basically saying um, if you're seeing this I can't finish this please do all you can to finish it because um, I knew there were some people out there who if it was possible they would find a way to do it um, I'm I'm just thankful that uh, I am still here and I was able to finish this. Um, but uh, here's here's what I want to say with this. I, I represent, um, outside of the Hero Escape community, a community of people who go through constant pain, really, just constant pain, 
whether it's uh, socially, um, whether it's just you know personally, physically, um, they go through a lot, and it's it's really um, it's 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 an invisible illness because you can't really see it. You know, the, right. only the person that's dealing with it deals with its effects, um, and it's very degenerative, um, and majority of um, this community of, of people with Crohn's colitis, you know, whatever, um, especially severe cases, um, they uh, um, they lose hope. They lose hope. I know. I was like it very early in my life. My adolescence was not fun. It was not fun. And it took, it took um, a lot of good people to pull me out of that. Um, a lot of prayer, a lot of help. Um, but for the people out there um, who are suffering for that community, um, I dedicate this entire series to. Um, this th this entire effort um, was for them. Was for was I mean. <sighs> One of the majority of reasons I did this was because I wanted to be a filmmaker. I wanted to, um, I wanted to do something, um, and I couldn't get out of my home. So I'm like, okay, if I can't get to a film set, I'm going to bring the film set to me. And um, so, um, so people within, you know, this this group of people can see someone. Um, and understand that even if you are rolled up in a ball of pain, and I guarantee, I mean, there are many times I was, uh, there's something you can do. It doesn't have to be this crazy. It doesn't have to be this crazy. But um, I know, because I see it in so many cases, that um, sometimes survivability of an illness um, depends on someone not focusing on it. To have something right. to carry them uh, forward. Something to give them a reason to keep on going i have lots of reasons i got my family um i got friends and i got this um and so let's see here I'm trying to read what i'm saying um yeah just you know something proactive to keep a person going it can be a little thing but as long as it keeps you moving forward um find your arena and this is for anybody it doesn't matter what you know conflict you have in your life find your arena and play your game um and wherever you are in your life um might be a simple thing it might be something that is impossible i know like coming into like animating season two and thinking that season two and three was going to be a two to three year pod project it took almost eight years i realized i just thought what have i gotten myself into um this is gonna take a while and but I didn't focus on the end. I didn't really focus too much on on the end product. I was just focusing on the next picture. I was focusing on um, uh, the next day, the next minute, the next second. Um, and I just kept on going. That one step of that, one step of the one step at a time mentality. Um, and that's what got me through. That that's as you guys were saying, you know. Um, I mean, I'm the type of person, yes, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to finish it or die trying. And that that was really what I did. But it took focusing on just the next thing. Not not at what's like, you know, miles or years ahead. but And not even really, really knowing how I was going to do everything. Um, mm. How I was going to get, because there are people across the country. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get to them for voiceovers, but I'm going to, you know, I'll figure out a way. Um, and this is why one of the reasons why my faith is so important to me. Um, like people in the past, like say, like I'm here in the United States. Um, the founders of this country, when they were facing more terrible odds than any of us are facing today um, against tyranny, um, their um, unifying stance was a trusting in providence. That's, that's their name for it. Um, I mean, for them, it's providence. For me, it's God. Um, and it's one of the things that uh, just just trusting in something that's stronger than yourself that gives you strength. 
Um, and that's that's what I do uh, in that. Um, but yeah, this is my arena. Um, this is what I chose to do. Um, okay, there's that. There's that segment. That's just one of of, of a few. Hold on. <laughs> uh, here. Um, all right. Here, here's something. Um, it was um, many years ago that um, the first thing that inspired me, or one of the first films that inspired me to actually even think about um, filmmaking in any way, was um, Lord of the Rings: Fellowship of the Ring. That is my um, one of the most favorite favorite films of all time, personally. Um, it just shows a journey. It and um, I love the line. Um, what is it that Gandalf says at the end? Um, it, it's, uh, you know, Frodo says, I wish none of this had happened to me, all, all this, you know. And uh, Gandalf says, uh, well, that's not really, you know, for you to decide. You know, what you have to decide to decide is what to do with the time given to you. And that, I mean, that always carried me through. I floated home. Like, I walked to the theater um, at that time, because at the time, I think I was like 18, I was still a teenager. I floated home, and then the next week, I got, I, I got the, I was familiar with The Hobbit. I had never read through The Lord of the Rings. I got the book, and I read through it because I wanted to see what the ending was. I didn't want to wait years for the <laughs> films to come out uh, to see what it was about. And now it's like a bi yearly read for me. Um, uh, I mean, and at an even younger age, I mean, I like Peter Jackson, um, Tolkien, uh, Roddenberry was Star Trek, Spielberg with Indiana Jones, George Lucas was Star Wars. I mean, these guys are um, uh, C.S. Lewis with uh, Chronicles of Narnia. So many legends um, in just the uh, industry of storytelling. And I dared myself to think, to hope, um, to dream I could become one of them. And I think I took a tiny step today, a tiny step. Nowhere close, but I think I took a tiny step today. Um, and that's all you can hope for. Um, okay, semi-political stance. I feel like we're at war. Um, not really against uh, anything physically, um, although I think in some areas of the world we're getting there. But I think we are seriously losing um, many aspects of pop culture um, that that we had like you know 20 30 plus years ago just the type of stories to inspire uh, generations um, inspire them to do whatever you know they, they want to do um, people are losing hope um, at the cost right yeah go ahead go ahead Sean you gonna refill okay you gotta refill <laughs> at the cost of gaining and maintaining ideology. And I'm not saying not to believe in something, but um, I ask people to rethink what you might be believing if the cost is hope. If you're losing hope, it might not be the best thing. Um, the stories should be told by the storytellers. Stories should be told by storytellers, not by corporate CEOs. I think um, a CEO for it is an entertainment corporation, whatever, is there to run a company, which is fine. That's what they're there for. Um, and I'm sure most of them do their jobs very, very well. Um, but they do not tell good stories. Don't helm that. Leave it to the storytellers and bring in good storytellers, those that actually know how to um, drive a narrative and inspire people um, and I mean I see a decline and so that's why I'm that's why one of the reasons why personally I'm in this fight obviously I want to tell a good story and have fun and that's a great thing about doing this type of fight you don't really have to fight you don't have to argue just have fun just just create characters and just do something with it so I mean th that's that's a lot of my drive um, Ten years ago, when I started this, though, when I started this whole thing, um, I did it to save my life. 
I really did. Um, I mean, there were some other things, but it was to save my life. I'm still here, thank God. But if I go further um, with this, it's not just going to be my life. It's not going to be about my life anymore. It's my goal to save, or even even if it's in a little, even a, like a less than a 1% way, to save the heartbeat of pop culture. Because it's deteriorating. I feel like it's deteriorating. And I think it's going to be... Um, like this generation of um, creatives um, that aren't like attached to Hollywood per se um, to to find an audience uh, to inspire uh, okay okay yeah I'm gonna give okay I'm gonna give this nod um, all these voice actors the people who helped me to maintain the series um, they're not professional voice actors um, they are my friends. They are my family, and some friends are like family. Uh, they put as much time, care, and talent as they were able, and um, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I did this um, during my limited free time, sleep time. A lot of nights were spent animating um, instead of sleeping. And a lot of those nights when I was animating through the night, um, and this is another thing, if you feel like you're pushing yourself, if you're not losing sleep, you're not pushing yourself. <laughs> you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Um, I think I had a good reason, because I mean, I was in so much pain that sleep was impossible, so I just kept on going forward no matter what anyway. <sighs> One more thing. Now, when I close, and I'm, I'm about to close the stream, um, and how I usually close it, what's my line? You have a purpose in your life, find it, pursue it, live it. Um, I came up with that after the last surgery I had a couple years ago. Because um, I was thinking, you know, everybody has a closing tagline. Joe, what's yours? Joe. I think he mm -hmm. fell asleep. Did he fall asleep? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I muted my mic so because oh, okay. I was I was having some pez. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, well, my, mine's mine's not anything spiritual though. Mine's just I'm not crazy. Okay. I'm Joe crazy. Yeah, just the, but that's a way to why. market myself. Oh, to memorize. So iconic. Yeah. yeah. Still, still, and I mean, Sean, you you have yours. Uh, be good or be good at it. Right. You know, it, and so I was just thinking, you know, I need something, but I wanted something, you know, to be just a little bit more inspirational, just to give people, you know, just to be like, to maybe give it like, oh, like, huh? What, I hope so. So a little bit of backstory on that. I mean, um, for me, purpose is, is very important to discover your pur purpose, your drive. Um, and when i was when i was in that hospital for like a month and i'm just like you know what yeah that, i think i think i you know i survived it i'm just like okay i'm still going um i think i really need to to hit this home um when it comes to doing these live streams so that i mean that's how it came about and <clears throat> origins was all was all about um like not m more so identity but you know coming into your own you know what what are you supposed to be i mean my name is ryan um that's that's the name i was given when i was born but what is your true name what what is you know um what 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 is what what is the embodiment of the things that you were gifted with you know when you were born what what creates you it could be your name um, but it also could be something else and i always get in my own head i was giving myself a um, long time I gave myself the name Storyteller. It doesn't really ring totally true, but that's just what I've always had in my head. Um, but I was looking, was always looking for something simpler, and it took me well, uh, 40 years of my life, um, and didn't realize it at the time, but it happened during ScapeCon. Um, and where someone, someone called me something, and it wasn't until a few weeks ago when I was thinking about it, I'm just like, there it is. That, that's the name. That's what's going to carry me forward. <clears throat> um, and it was just right in front of me nearly the whole time, the, these past 10 years. Um, so going back to SkateCon last year, um, I was in the main uh, tournament room 
and um, someone was calling me, I think, for a prize or something. I think it was uh, Ryan. Um, I don't, I don't remember what his. Uh, I think he was one of the one of the guys helping like organize or, or over overseeing the the events. Um, and I don't remember his his uh, forum name. <clears throat> you mean Vidar? Is it Vidar? Okay. I think it was Vidar43, I think it is. Okay. That's the yeah. only Ryan that I know. Okay, so. well, well if, if it's him, credit to him uh, for doing this. But he was calling me from across the hall. I'm just, I kind of understand what he was what he was saying. Um, and he's like, because it was something I just never heard before. He's like, hey, Tails. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I was like that. That's that's kind of new, you know. I mean, it's part, you know, tales of Hallie Just you didn't want to say the whole thing, um, understandably. Um, but I was thinking of it a few years ago, like, because I was always trying to find something synonymous to storyteller that was a little bit was a little bit different. And then it just hit me when I was when I was thinking about what Ryan called me last summer. I'm like, there you go. That's it. That's it. Um, so, I mean, I think for those of you out there, if you really want to, like, um, and this journey, I mean, finding a name or finding something that, you know, really drives you forward to the future, it takes time. I mean, it takes a lot of thought. It's not going to happen overnight. It could, but usually it's not. But for me, I just want to introduce myself to everybody for the future. This is my name. My name is Tails. Hmm. You have a purpose in your life. Find it, pursue it, live it. If it's not tomorrow, we'll see you Sunday for a final TOV podcast until August 20th. Thank you guys so much. It's been an amazing ride. Thank you guys for joining me on the paddle. Uh, Corey, Jason, Joe, Jeremy, Sean here. Everybody who has helped out, um, everybody who supported. Um, I'm very, very grateful. I thank you. Until next time. Later. Oh, All right. Let me bring this up. And this is yeah. Okay. Bye. Right. Yeah, that was a long talk. <laughs> tails. <laughs> I was not expecting you to say tails. Huh? Oh my god. You laughing at your name or something? Yeah, the name Tails. Oh. <laughs> Are you changing your name to Tails now? No, I'm not. I'm not like legally changing it. That's just <laughs> slap our name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's that's I it. Because storyteller is just too long. Oh, I was going to tell you, Gallagher, I've adopted you already into my clan. <laughs> Gal <laughs> meaning is like foreign or domestic, Gur meaning help or support. Adapted. Mm. Yeah. Oh. And this is the guy who introduced me to my wife, so he's been a long time brother. Boys. <clears throat> Alright. Well done, Ryan. Well done. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys could see it, but my eyes are like slits. <laughs> oh, my, oh, I bet. You're dead inside. <laughs> oh, I got to get up tomorrow morning and yeah, do it all guy. over again. Yeah. I gotcha. Are you driving home tomorrow? Yeah. All the way back from Michigan to here. Seven hour drive one way. It's okay. I'll, I'll give you some access to to drink a little bit. So no, no, I man. If they get pulled over by the cops and they see these white lines, you know, oh, come I'm on. in trouble. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm terrible. Yes, you are. It's all right. <laughs> I made a joke about that on the internet, so don't worry about it. In an op my opening cold open for a video that apparently people do watch. So, well, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs>